Happy Thinky Thursday. Welcome on in. Hello. What's up, Jamie and Headbang and Maniac and Alkali and Chicken? Oh my god, hi. Hello. What's up? Ooh, new stuff. <laughs> We are slowly, if you hadn't noticed, we're slowly working on a little graphical overhaul to the Twitch channel. It's not final yet, so if you have initial feedback, you can let us know. We're still we're still in the works, but I hope you guys like that new starting soon codenames card. Um, we're kind of going with that motif of the, the banner you can see now, which if you haven't looked at it, it's so cute. We have a new channel banner on the channel that's of me. Whole little code day as a little code days card. It's super cute. Our in-house uh, graphic designer, Stepan, did that, and... Oh my god, I'm in love with it. Oh my god. But yeah, so we're we're keeping with that theme and kind of redoing some stuff, trying to make some stuff sleeker. I think originally the the stuff that used to be down here was like a little bit much. It's still a lot, because we still have captions and we still have chat. It's still a lot, but I think it's a little bit more cohesive now. We're working on it. I hope you guys like it. Hexstar, thank you for that five month sub. I appreciate you. Best wishes to the team. Hope everyone is in good health. I am. Thank you very much, Hexstar, for asking. I appreciate it. I'm impressed by the graphics person who fit raised height into the horizontal banner. Yeah, I know. I was very impressed with this. Stefan's amazing. Uh, I'm very honored to be featured in, in such a cool way. I, lo I love the way he drew me. It's awesome. Jeremiah, welcome on in. Bloody Lion, hello. I love you all very, very much. Welcome, welcome. Omar, thank you for joining us. Ifator, Ifator, I feel like it's been a uh, heckin' second. I hope you've been good. Thank you for joining us today. Good morning, Asmadi. Welcome on in. Are you not a, are you a Gamma, Asmadi? What's up? Why are you here? Tobias, welcome on in. How's it going? It's good to see you. Uh, Rennie, of course, hello. Arliel, Bill, enjoy your lurk. What else? I think I get, did I get everybody? No Mystical Ninja, welcome on in. And Lone Jedi, happy Thursday, what's up? I'm having big Gamma fun with Jamma. Jamie, don't worry about it. You know what? I'm gonna be real with you, I don't like Gamma. <laughs> you're not missing, you're, have you been to Gamma? I can't remember. Were you there last year? You were, right? You were? That feels like so long ago. I honestly, I can't remember if I if I saw you at Gamma last year, if you went. You were? Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know about you. I, Gamma's, that, Gamma's not my favorite. I don't know. Oz and Ents welcome in. I will say though, I will say it's very upsetting because I was like, meh, Gamma's boring. I'm not going to go because there's really not a whole lot for me to do there. Yeah, I'm not missing Gamma per se. I'm missing Hand Without Peeps. That's valid. There's a lot of really cool people who are there. The actual event itself, if you're on the media side of stuff, I know they're working on making it more media focused, but like as of right now, there's not a whole lot um, for someone like me to do at that type of show. Um, but I will say, I was like, we were on the 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 call, the internal call at CG where we were like divvying up who goes where, and I was like, ew, gross, Gamma, I don't want to go, cause I just, I just, it's not for me. Nothing against the people who run Gamma, there's just not a whole lot for me to do. I don't do sales, I don't do distribution, I don't do any of that stuff. Uh, so I was like, no. And then of course, of course, little Steven Tryhard, new employee Steven, longtime friend of mine, I'm allowed to make fun of him, you know, went because he's he's sales and distribution, yada yada, he should go. But he was like, ugh, Rachel thinks it's boring, I'll go, don't worry, CGE, I don't think anything's boring, I'll go to everything. He went, and of course, this is the one year that Travis Willingham from uh, Critical Role is there. So Tony and Steven are now texting me pictures of them hanging out with Travis Willingham, and I'm not there! I'm so mad! The rest of the game I don't care about, but of course the one year I don't go is the year that like Darrington Press goes and Travis goes on behalf of half of them. Very upsetting. It is a grave loss to me personally. I know, I know, it's, it's really upsetting. Apparently, I'll have to have Tony on the stream when he gets back. According to Tony, when he saw Travis in the hallway, he like just hugged him and I was like, that's, you're not supposed to do that. But apparently Travis was really nice about him. They got a really cute picture together. But I was like, Tony, we need to, we need to learn boundaries. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need boundaries happening. Kit Kat, thank you for that five months. I appreciate it. Thank you for supporting the mods. Listen, you might not be talking to Travis, but you're talking to chat right now. And aren't we cool? You are, chat, you're way cooler than the cast of the award-winning Twitch show Critical Role. I can say that. Silver Metal, it's good to see you. What's up, friend? Yeah, Darrington Press has been doing some really, really sick stuff too. And I think they just announced their own like TTRPG system, which is cool. I don't keep up with it super closely. <gasps> Oh my god, Kit Kat! Thank you so much! What the heck? What the, what the, what the, what? Thank you so much for that mod love. If you're new around here and you didn't know all the revenue that we generate on this channel from gifted subs like what Kit Kat just did, regular subs, bits, 
if you watch an ad, anything like that, all that revenue goes to my mods to thank them for helping me out behind the scenes. Kit Kat, you legend, what the heck? Thank you so much. You're the friggin' best. Enjoy your subs to anyone who got them. Enjoy your ad-free viewing and your emotes. Yeah, don't hug people when Ray is missing out. Very, very, it was extremely uncool of Tony. But yeah, I just kept getting bombarded with with uh, text messages from Steven and Tony being like, nye, 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 nye. Oh, Gamma's so boring. Oh, just us hanging out with Travis. Whatever, it's still boring. I don't care. <laughs> just for me, personally. They actually work in sales, so it's not boring for them. For me, it's boring. <sighs> Whatever. I'll have to take the L on that. It's upsetting. It's upsetting. I would have loved to meet Travis, but it's fine. It's fine. I'll survive. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> anyways, um, I forgot. Why did, did Osmani say he was at Gamma? Because I, I got distracted by Jamie's comment. What did, what did? I don't go to Gamma. Never have, never will. That's valid. That's cool. That's cool. Chat is cool. It's officially memorialized now. Ray, I hear you like teaching people code names. I do. Do you need to be taught how to play code names? I'll teach you how to play code names. <laughs> I do. I don't. I didn't know that was the word on the street, but it's very true. Got to meet Ray last year, so we'll see if it gets any better than that. Aw, that's cute. That's cute. Yeah, I'd be happy to teach you silver metal. Do you, do you know how to play regular code names? Because I taught. I've been teaching folks recently how to play code names duet. Uh, or do you need do you need to be taught on both of them? Cause I can I can do that. If you wanna if you wanna hang out, let me know. I own it, but I never played. That's a cardinal sin. Silver medal, what's going on? What's going on? Are you gonna be at Essen? I am gonna be at Essen. I am gonna be at Essen. I'm very excited. It's gonna be my very first Essen. Oh my god, hell yeah. Y'all, there's some gonna be some real cool stuff happening at GCC. It's a brand new convention happening in Canada in June. It's not I don't want to talk about it yet until I like have said cool thing on a piece of paper that's like official, but potentially there's some very, very cool stuff happening at GCC involving yours truly. And I'm very, very excited. Very, very excited. I know it's sad. Well, it's, it's not sad. It's a tragedy. Yeah. If you ever want to, if you ever want to stream together, I'm happy to, happy to teach it. I was excited that CGE will have their new games to play or just yes. You get to do all the all the playtesting. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze so loud. Hold on, I'm sorry. <laughs> I like how the captions took me saying Jesus Christ and made it she's great. <laughs> Also, I hope the captions will be easier to read now. I tried to give them a little bit more, a little bit more breathing room um, on the overlay. She is great. God, God bless. Salute. Thank you, KitKat. Wait, KitKat, hi. I love you. Wait, no, KitKat's been here. Dude, my brain is fried. I'm so sorry. Y'all, I, uh, I can't talk about it. There's so many things I can't talk about these days. There is a thing I'm working on that has my brain um, like scrambled eggs lately. So I'm so sorry. If I, if I say hi to you like five times, I, I deeply apologize. My brain, again, really cool stuff happening. Can't talk about it yet. Should, I can talk about it, but I shouldn't. Okay, Dory, thanks, Kikan. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Co-op breakfast cookie. Wait, that's cute. That's a really cute idea, Osmati. Someone make that. That's adorable. Co-op breakfast cooking game confirmed. I wish there were more board games that had like mundane themes like that. That's adorable. Like that game, we saw one when I was doing my walk around at PAX U. Um, we saw that game that was a co-op two-person game about assembling flat packed furniture, like assembling Ikea furniture. Such a cute concept. I want more stuff like that. I want more like, it's Lazy Sunday and you're making breakfast together. I need that. Anything's edible if you try hard enough, Ifatori. <laughs> no, that's about soy sauce. I get bullied so much for my soy sauce addiction. It feels very unwarranted, okay? Just because I share a lot about myself doesn't give you the right. Doesn't give you the right. <laughs> Soy sauce is delicious on an, in an omelet. I... 
so much. I'm glad. Well, it's really upsetting because I bought, because I, so I buy soy sauce by the gallon. Um, <laughs> and I bought a gallon recently because I typically get low sodium, low sodium, low sodium, <laughs> God, my dude, I swear there's something in the air today. It's a combination of I'm working on a lot of stuff that I can't talk about, which puts me like in a kind of mood already. Also, my windows are open. It feels like summer. I have like summer vacation vibes. I'm all over the place and I'm so sorry, but I bought this gallon of soy sauce. I usually get low, I almost said it again, sodium soy sauce. And the kind that I bought recently isn't low sodium and it's too salty. It's too salty. I don't like it, but I have to work my way through it. I have to drink this gallon of full sodium, full sodium soy sauce. Low sodium. <laughs> Because we are here for how neat and tidy these streams are. I know, you're here for nothing but extreme professionalism. Okay, Dre. <laughs> Drink was not the right um, verb. But would you say you eat soup or you drink soup? You know, it's like, mm, you know. <laughs> You can fix the soy sauce if you add a bunch of pepper. I don't believe that, Osmati. That feels fake. That's that's not real, cause, no, that's not real. No. Jesus, <laughs> alkali. <laughs> to the soup question, yes, you actually do both. Exactly, so I both eat and drink my soy sauce. Same, same difference, duh, duh. In your defense, fried egg, fried rice has both soy sauce and egg. It's amazing. That's why I love fried rice. My two favorite, my two favorite foods: soy sauce and egg. <laughs> Yo, welcome on in, Brownie. It's nice to meet you. Hello, I tested Arnak yesterday with my son. Great experience. That's awesome. Thank you so much for playing our game. We really appreciate it. I'm just doing some pre pre stream rambling, but we are going to play. Oh, I lost my captions. We are going to play some Arnak in just a little bit. Uh, but thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. I hope you're doing well. Welcome to the Check Games Edition Twitch channel, where I just talk about random stuff. Victory Points Gaming, thank you for that raid. Welcome, honey. What's up, friends? Hello. What were y'all playing today? How was your stream? Arnak is a cool game. I am so glad that you agree. We we think the same thing here. Soy sauce use doesn't extend to desserts. No, I draw my line at sweet things. I don't typically like sweet things in general, though. Massive Vault, it's nice to meet you. Welcome on into the Check Games Edition Twitch channel. Thank you for being here. If you're new around here, because we got some new folks in chat, uh, CGE, or Check Games Edition, is a board game publisher. All these games you see behind me are games that we made here. I didn't make them because I'm new around here, but CGE has made all of the games behind me, uh, including code names. Uh, Starship Captives and The Lost Runes of Arnak, which is what we're gonna be playing in just a minute here on BGA. I will be opening this game up to people from chat, so if you wanna play with us, you can do so. Uh, what else do we need to say? Oh, uh, I'll be picking people to play with first from a list of folks who've redeemed the Play Arnak with Ray channel point reward, which you can find right underneath chat. It's a thousand channel points. If you redeem that, you get like first call. Um, and then if there's any spots after that, I open up it to anyone who wants to play. I can't say words today. Oh, that's awesome, Massive Vault. Thank you so much. That's true. Uh, we we had to change <laughs> we had to change Arnak in French because Arnak is yeah it's it's like problematic in French or something. So we had to we had to change it. So it's it's Narnak or something in French, right? Why are my captions having such a rough time? Hello, talk test one two. None of these things are words I'm saying. Come on, you can do it. Talk test one two. Um, trying one more time. Is scam in French? I knew it was something, it was something like that. It wasn't like, it wasn't like offensive or something or we wouldn't have named it that at all, but it was like not, it didn't have a good connotation in French. So we had to, we had to do ye old switcheroo. I feel like this is my chance to maybe redeem my terrible Arnak record. Yo, Jamie, are you gonna play with us? That'd be sick. But I need to prime minis really bad. Oh, for the silly stream we're doing tomorrow? 
Oh, Jamie, let me tell you, my minis are primed. That's all they are. So we gotta, we gotta, we gotta paint them tomorrow. If you didn't know, uh, tomorrow I'm doing a streaming marathon with my good friend Jamie Daggers from chat. If we, if we didn't get a shout out, if we could get one, that'd be great. Uh, Jamie and I are gonna be locking ourselves in a stream together. She's gonna be streaming on her channel. I'm gonna be streaming on my channel. We're each gonna be painting an ungodly amount of minis uh, and we're not gonna stop until they're all done. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow. I'm gonna be painting the minis from Starship Captains and I use mini uh, broadly because they're really not meant to be painted. They're really tiny, but I primed all of them in a, in a, in a um, dazzling display of hubris when I thought I could, with the help of my coworkers, paint all of them when I was in the Czech Republic. We got like four painted, which now means I have, I swear to God, like 30 primed Starship Captains minis. And if you know anything about Starship Captains, them being primed makes them unplayable because it covers up the color and you need to know what color they are. So the reason I haven't played Starship Captains on this channel in a like, month or so is because my copy is currently unplayable. So we're gonna fix that tomorrow. Jamie's gonna be painting some minis from another game and I'm gonna be painting Starship Captains minis and we're gonna just chill in a voice chat together and we're gonna power through and it's gonna be the power of friendship uh, and sleep deprivation and then I'll be able to play Starship Captains and I'm very excited. <laughs> You should have just dipped them in their different colors. Then it would be the same as if I didn't paint them. That's so chaotic. Oh my God, no. I, the concept of dipping minis in paint was completely ruined by Tony when he just took his wet mini and dunked it in water. That like genuinely haunts my dreams now. Oh, thank you, Victory Point. Sometimes they, sometimes they have a bad time. Um... They're, they're not they're not perfect by any means, but I use Google Meets. So I just have a Google Meets um, meeting open on the side uh, and it's just myself in there and you can turn on closed captions and they are not, they're not bad. Uh, when I have multiple people on stream, I use Skype because uh, Google Meets isn't good for like actually having other people in there. Uh, but thank you. Glad it works. I, I sometimes get frustrated, frustrated with it because it's not perfect. Um, Ew, I heard Google Meets. Ew, ew, uh, no. They're 10 millimeters for anyone familiar with mini miniature scaling. Is that big or small, Jamie? I'm unfamiliar. <laughs> that sounds small. 10 millimeters, it's like this big? Small? Oh, that's Curse Kit Kat, I hate that. Yo, what's up, James Blake? Welcome on in. That's what we like to call small. Okay. No worries, Victory Point. Thank you for that raid. Thanks for stopping by. I hope to see you again in the future. <gasps> Hi, Meg Gibb. Meguna, hello. I love you. Welcome on and happy Thursday. Uh, but yeah, James, I, the water feature is still present. So for those of you who don't know, uh, typically I stream every Tuesday morning with my coworker, Eleni. We have a really nice little morning chit chat. I had to miss it this week because my roof started leaking directly into my office. Ray, why are you streaming if your roof is leaking directly into your office? It's still doing that. Uh, we have a bucket and it's currently not raining. So currently we're fine slash the handyman hasn't shown up yet. What was gonna happen was he was gonna come Tuesday. Tuesday was his day. I was like, all right, cool. My roof is leaking. There's not a whole lot I can do about it. This is important. So I canceled the Tuesday stream. I was like, all right, I, I evacuated my office. I got on my laptop. I was like, ready to go. Dude didn't show up for the entire day. I'm there, nine to five. Homie didn't show up. So, mm-hmm, love that. Text us the next day, Say says he got sick, which fine, people get sick, whatever. Um, but I'm like, you can't come today because I like can't not stream. Can't come tomorrow. I'm doing this big long marathon that I don't want to reschedule. So hopefully he comes sometime this weekend or early next week slash hopefully we don't get a lot of rain to the point where it's like dangerous. It's like not bad now. I'm not like worried that my office is going to flood. It's just like we should fix it. Uh, and in order for it to be fixed, there needs to be like people in this room for probably a couple hours to fix it. And so I can't stream when that's happening. So... What if it rains during the marathon? Well, that'll be good content. And that's why you have renter's insurance. <laughs> um, but yeah, handyman, more like a nandy man. So yeah, I apologize for missing the Tuesday stream. It ended up turning out that there was literally no need to do that because he didn't show up. So I'm sorry about that. Um, no, no, got not good content. No, it's perfect. I love chaos. That's great. 
That's what the buckets are for, exactly. So I apologize for missing that. Hopefully he doesn't try to come next Tuesday so I don't have to skip another stream, but if that happens, that happens. I gotta fix my roof because it's not, again, I don't think it's dire, but like we shouldn't not fix it. So yeah, <laughs> everything is content. So true, Megan, so true. Fraxline, welcome on in, how's it going? Of course, it's been raining all day, every day here for like a week in true New England fashion. Yeah, well, that there's been like water damage up there that we didn't really notice, but it started raining like crazy the last couple days for Actiline. Like we got we got hail the other day, and that's when it started like actually leaking, and we noticed it. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we shouldn't not fix it. <laughs> so I really hope it doesn't try to interfere with another stream day. But if it happens, you guys now know why. Um, so I apologize in advance if that, if the timing ends up being crappy again, but we'll see. Also on a positive note, you'll always have fresh water. Mm, I don't trust the roof water, man. I don't trust that to not have like lead in it. So <laughs> I'm good, but thanks. Or like asbestos. Again, New England houses. I don't, wouldn't trust it. Wouldn't trust it. No, thank you. But yeah, I'm really excited for the, the mini painting stream tomorrow. We're gonna do a little Arnex stream today and then we're gonna do an all day stream tomorrow. I have no frame of reference for how long. When <laughs> don't drink lead, Jesus. I have no frame of reference for how long the stream tomorrow will be. I think if I focus and I don't try to give every single mini their own distinct, unique personality, I think I can do it in like the normal five hour runtime of the Friday show. But I shouldn't put that out into the universe because that's what happened when I did the Under Falling Skies puzzle. I was like, there's no way this could be less than 10 hours. Cut to 15 hours later. Like, I feel like once I verbalize it, I jinx it, you know? Puzzle Marathon Part 2 Electric Boogaloo. See, the thing is, is I don't mind long streams. I don't love when they sneak up on me. Like when we did, when we did the um, King of the Castle stream, right? It was a subathon, but I know you guys. I was expecting someone to max out the subathon timer. So I, I woke up that morning, sat down in this chair, and I was like, I'm not leaving this chair for 12 hours. I know it as soon as I sat down, I was like, it's not, we're gonna be here forever. Um, but what got me with the puzzle marathon stream was I genuinely, hold on, let me, God, I'm sorry. My, we got a compliment about the captions and now they're being poopy crappy. Um, what happened with the puzzle stream was I genuinely was convinced that it was gonna be sub eight hours and then it wasn't it. That's what got me. That's what led to the madness was the, the lack of anticipating how long it was actually gonna be. I got true anxiety with the puzzle marathon fractalite. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to do that to you. Our skylight leaks all the time. Oh, yikes. But we can't do anything about it until the Roof needs replacement. Fun New England times, yeehaw. But okay, remember y'all, I'm not allowed to say I am in New England anymore. I got yelled at for that last time because I'm in Pennsylvania now. So I guess I can't relate, Fractaline. I, I, my New England card was taken away from me. Did you see the new Bonanza reprint with the flower re-theme? No, wait, let me look. That sounds really cute. I like Beth's work a lot. She did uh, Cascadia, right? Or am I thinking of a different Beth? Banan Bonanza flower reprint? <laughs> oh, sorry, uh, James, you gotta get uh, link permission first. It's Bonanza Delilah's. Here, I'll switch. That's so cute. Sorry, my cam is in a weird spot because it's set up for the Arnak game. Wait, no, this is just regular Bonanza. Where's Bonanza Delilah? I clicked this link, but it just brings me to Bonanza. Hello, am I dumb? I'm gonna steal James's link. Oh! Isn't it Dahlia? Oh, I'm I'm dyslexic, dude. I'm illiterate. I don't know. Is it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it looks cute. Do we have pictures of the cards? No, these are just regular Bonanza cards. Okay. Is there like a lot of information about it yet? 
Doesn't have its own page yet. Okay, cool. Well, I am excited at the concept of that. Cause yeah, there's something about the Bonanza beans that have always kind of scared me. There's something about their little faces that kind of freak me out. Like thematically, this doesn't this doesn't call to me. I mean, it's cute. Like it's, it's definitely very cute. I used to play it a lot as a kid. Um, but yeah, I'd be down for a retheme. That's fun. God, I haven't played Bonanza in so long. Maybe that's what I should play with my my couple friends. I was talking last week that I made, we made like a couple friend uh, in my partner's medical school uh, who are very new to board games. So I'm trying to expand my light to medium weight game collection to teach them. Cause I taught them, I taught them Wingspan this weekend, which was really fun. They really liked it. That gave me a lot of hope for the future. Uh, but Bonanza, what happens is like, I can do one big teach and then they kind of tank, you know, that they don't want to learn another big game. So I'm trying to, I've got plenty of games in like the, the Wingspan, did I say Wavelength? I think I might've. Wingspan is what I'm talking about. Plenty of games in the Wingspan weight category. The thing is that after I teach a game like that, I need to then go to like quite light games afterwards because that's kind of all they're, they feel up for. And I think Bonanza might be good, might be a good pick that. I haven't picked up Bonanza in a very long time. I don't really have any desire to play that game based on the artwork, but I've heard I'm very wrong in that opinion. I mean, it's cute. It's very campy, it's very cute. Um, I don't think it's like bad or anything, um, but I'd be down for a flower retheme. Speaking of flowers, you guys, I gardened for like the first time ever by myself. I'm so excited. Kama, welcome on and thank you for joining us. Um, I've only ever gardened like with my mom and like with my grandma and I've only just kind of been um, auxiliary to the whole process. They're like, Ray, hold this plant. I'm like, okay, <laughs> you know, I wasn't learning anything. I wasn't really doing it. But we had a really beautiful day this weekend and I got pansies, which I've planted with my mom and grandma before. So I like know how pansies kind of work. It's a good time to plant them. So yeah, I planted pansies the other day and I felt so, it was so nice. It was so good. It was so delightful. And I also planted, I, I got ambitious and got some seeds for some other types of flowers that I don't think are gonna live. I think they're gonna die. I like pansies cause you buy them and they're already like little, they're already plants. But my partner was like, I, you know what? I'm gonna just blame Rancid for this. Rancid was like, we should do seeds. It'll be so much more fun. You'll be so much more surprised. And I was like, I don't think we can handle seeds. Uh, that sounds like a lot more work. So we have half the bed is pansies and half the bed is mystery seeds. I don't know if anything's gonna grow, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Gardening is addictive, watch out. I really, really enjoyed it. It was really fun. Big fan so far. I can only imagine Rancid warning their friends. She works in board games. She might jump you with big games. <laughs> Just get through the first four game and then tell her you need something smaller and then you'll have time to let you. Dude, that happened. <laughs> they, I do kind of have, I do kind of have a reputation already with, with his like med school friends. We were at, um, we were at like um, a restaurant last night with some of his med school friends and the couple that we've been hanging out with were there and there was a new couple. There was, there was a new target and the new target was like, oh, I heard you work at board games. And I was like, yes, I do. What, what is it? <laughs> what did it come to me? And he said, do you ever play, have you ever played Seven Wonders? And I freaked out because I love Seven Wonders. And the, the, the couple that we've been playing games with was there and they were like, watch out. You might not want to say that because she'll get you. And it was a joke, but also kind of not a joke. Also kind of not. Uh, so I think I now have a reputation of being like, I don't know, the siren of board games of I, 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 you say one wrong move and I dig my little fingers into you and pull you in. You can never escape and I'll be inviting you over every weekend until the day you die. <laughs> Mystery seeds, everything I know about gardening. Learn from Stardew Valley, of course, is that you'll get whatever the seasons, foraging's options are. We'll find out. I got a big packet of mystery seeds, so stay tuned. But with all the chatting aside, I think it's time to start our Arnak game because Arnak is rather long, especially when we play with four people. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this started. Of course, I've got a question of the day for you. We can talk more about my pansies, lots of stuff to chat about, but I wanna get this game going in the background just so we can get that started. So I'm gonna pull up the people who have redeemed the Play Arnak with Ray channel reward. Uh, and I'll offer up the spots to them first. And then if there are extra spots, other people can jump in. So spot number one, uh, we got Renny, Soften Your Razor, Evil Little Omar, DBX Runner, Mad Scientist, Wim the Webmaster, Omelette, Arliel, 
and Sun Thief. So if any of y'all are in chat and want to play, uh, now's the time. Sound off. Let me know. Let me know that you're you're here. Present. All right, let's go. And yes, yeah, so you can also redeem right now as well. Eiffel and Kit Kat. Uh, you can also get in on this. Renny says, yes, please. All right, we got Soften Your Razor. We got Renny. We got one more spot if anybody wants it. <laughs> yeah, Jamie, did you want to play? I know you're busy, so no pressure, but... All right, cool. Let me grab, um, all right. Well, Jamie had expressed, wait, Jamie, do you actually have a redemption or, okay, Kit, oh, Kit Kat gave it to you. I got you, I got you. Okay, that's cool. Jamie, we will put you in here. I don't have to log into BGA and look at all the games. I'm absolutely tanking, oh my God. Heck yeah, all right. All right. And we'll see if we if we finish this game in time, we can always do a second one. All right, so let me go ahead. Um, I only have forty five thousand channel points. Good lord. All right, let's do a four player game. All right, who are we doing? We're doing a soften your razor. We're doing Renny May, and we're doing a Jamie Daggers. Sorry to anyone who didn't make it in, but thank you all for being good sports. I appreciate it. All right, and we'll do real time game. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, I'm in a I'm in a async Arnak game with a lot of folks from from the community that I'm just getting stomped in right now. I don't think I'm losing, but I'm definitely I'm definitely not winning. <laughs> that is for sure. All right, uh, mods, if you wouldn't mind making um making a prediction, that'd be fabulous. We got Jamie, Soften Your Razor, myself, and Remy as our competitors for today. Again, if you didn't make it in, I apologize. Thank you for being good sports. Uh, you can always redeem and we will, we always play Arnek every now and then, so won't be your last chance. And you can always start an async game off stream. The redemption is just for if you want to play with me while I'm streaming. We play a lot of Arnak off camera as well in our Discord, so you can always just start a new game, pop a link in there. Arnak games go really quickly in our Discord, so that is always an option for you as well if you're looking to play Arnak with some friends from the community. This is my third time playing Arnak, so no promises. Renny, I believe in you. You got this. All right, let's center that. All right. Also, that logo is wrong. It's not... It is not a community check-in today. Oh my god, chicken. Jesus Christ. Oh my lord. We probably don't even need the logo because it's a little distracting on this kind of screen. All right. Bibbidi boppity, what are we doing? We start with two coins because we're going first. I don't like going first in Arnak. I don't like not having any compasses to start off with. We do have some good items for sale though. I typically don't ever start with like buying cards. It's usually not a good move, but there's some really nice cards for sale right now. So I'm gonna snag the lantern. I really like the lantern. Lan the lantern? <laughs> the lantern? Um, probably not an advisable move, but it's what I'm doing. So deal with it. Have a good lurk, James Blake. All right, now that stream is uh, going, now that the game is up and running, uh, we can talk about the question of the day today which is, if I remember correctly, I think I made it, what was the first type of board game content that you ever watched? Yeah, we're doing the Snake Temple, so watch out. Watch out. Sorry, I probably should have announced that. I just I just did it. Slash it just defaulted to that, and I said, okay. Yep, 
That's very weird to me that I was someone's introduction to board game content. It's very cool, but it's very weird. Oh, hell yeah, Kit Kat, what a classic. I think mine was Shut Up and Sit Down, I think. Duh. I think my first board game video I ever watched was like, oh God, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was a Shut Up, Shut Up and Sit Down video. I think the first like personality that I really glommed onto was Paula Deming. Um, but yeah, Paula Deming and Shut Up and Sit Down I think were the first. Oh, hell yeah, Ifator. I would love to do another like takeover like that. Looked like a lot of fun. That happened before my time, but. Yeah, Demi is amazing. She's wonderful. She's also so nice. Oh my God. Oh, wait a minute, Megan. I take it all back. I take it all back. Tabletop might've been before. Shut up and sit down. Wait, oh my God, dude. Friggin' core memory unlocked. I used to, even before tabletop, I used to watch um, Beer and Board Games, which was an old uh, YouTube channel that I don't even know if they're still making stuff. They're not like in the, the, the regular board gaming community, or at least not anymore. But when I was like 14, I used to watch them. Um, yeah, God, now that I like actually think about it, it was beer and board games, then it was tabletop, then it was shut up and sit down. Wow. Wow. Well, I guess like I don't think about tabletop anymore because they're not they're not around anymore. And beer and board games is not really in unless they exist in like a sub community that I'm not in. Um, they like don't come across my my feed anymore. Um, so I had like totally forgotten. Wow. That's crazy. God, I miss tabletop. Oh my god. I made my mom buy me so many board games because I saw them on tabletop. Oh God, I put us on a relatively short timer. I have to not talk too much in between my turns. I gotta <laughs> actually focus. God, everyone took the, the good. You all suck and I hate you. All right, I'm going here. Fine, 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 fine. What's up, uh, be, be more do? Sorry if I butchered that. Please feel free to let me know how I should say your name. Welcome on in, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for joining us in chat for the very first time. God, Tabletop was so good. I, I used to watch that when I was like really young too. I remember that that was my introduction to like Betrayal at House on the Hill. Oh, God, I discovered so many games through that channel. I don't know, I feel like, I feel like the, the industry as a whole has been trying to fill that void for a really long time and no one's really done it. Everyone, I, I mean, as a publisher, I get a lot of like pitches for, you know, sponsorships and stuff like that. And a lot of people will be like, we're the next tabletop. And I'm like, I don't believe you. Cause no one's, no one's, I don't know, done what Will Wheaton did. And I don't know what the secret sauce was. I don't know if it was the celebrity guests, if it was the access to the really nice sets if it was his personality, I don't know what it is, but no one else has captured, has captured that magic since, since Tabletop. And I think he had like a really impressive ability to get outside of the board gaming space. I think that's what it, that's what it was. And I don't know how he did that. I think it must've been, it must've been the guests or something, but he had an ability to get people who'd never played board games before into board games. And that I haven't really seen from anyone else. Like there are amazing board game channels that are like fantastic of the same quality. They have as good editing, they have high, like high profile guests, all that stuff. But there is something about tabletop that broke out of board games and into like the common YouTube feeds of people. And that is what I think made it so magical. Cause you'll meet so many people who got into board games or into board game media because of tabletop who had like never even played Catan, but then started watching tabletop and then got into board games. And I don't know that anyone else is doing that right now. And I, I don't know if it's just, Will Wheaton was just in a privileged spot with again, access to these guests, access to this editing, but like, I don't know, I miss it. There, there's still that kind of void. There's still that sort of hole, um, still that sort of hole in the industry. Um, and I don't, I don't know if it ever will be filled because I, I get people telling me all the time, you know, oh, we're the next tabletop, we're doing this in a tabletop style. I'm like, I don't, I'll believe it when I see it. No one else has done it yet.
Um, <laughs> all right, is it time to go to a level two site? Let's try it. Let's go here, spend a boat. Please give me something I can overcome. Please don't give me something terrible. No! Oh, come on. Oh God, all right, well, that was dumb. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. I'm gonna get stuck with a fear card. There's no way I'm getting three tablets. Yikes. Yikes. I mean, I guess I could, I guess I could use this idol. I could, I probably should. I probably should, that's what I'll do. Oh my God, hi, mom. Mom, we're talking about you. Do you remember me watching Will Wheaton's tabletop when I was a child and making you buy a betrayal at House on the Hill for me? <laughs> oh yeah, mom, that's just my like tag to tell people where else they can find me. Cause I am Raise Retros, but I'm Raise Retros working for CG. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Mom. <laughs> At first, I was like, damn. <laughs> just the first part that was, I remember nothing about your child. <laughs> no, you're good, Mama. I love you. The closest I am always Ray, stop that. You stop that. I don't know what it is. I've never found any shows with the same vibe as Tabletop somehow. It's it's this, I, I can't describe it. Yeah, I think the editing was huge. That sort of reality show style editing where they would, if you've never watched Tabletop, I should probably explain this because it is an old channel that's not around anymore. So people who maybe just got into the hobby have possibly never heard of it. Uh, so if you're unfamiliar, Tabletop was an old YouTube channel run by Will Wheaton. Um, and he basically did really well produced, highly edited board game playthroughs with high profile guests. Now when I say high profile, I mostly mean from like the nerd sphere. So we're talking like Felicia Day, Trisha Hirschberger, that type of person. So like pretty high level for the nerd fame, right? He would get those people on to play with him and he would do these very, highly edited segments where you'd be cutting back and forth between the gameplay and also sort of like reality show style confessionals with the players. So you would see this shot of like them playing, I think, um, I don't know, any any board game. Like I, for some reason, I remember their Betrayal at House on the Hill episode very well. Playing something like Betrayal and then it would cut to a confessional, right? with like the traitor or whatever, where they're talking about their strategy and then it pans to them executing their strategy. That was really cool. I don't, I don't know that anyone has tried to replicate that sort of confessional style because that really made it accessible and entertaining because one of the, the pitfalls of board game content that we all sat, sort of fall into is that unless you know the board game, it's not necessarily inherently interesting. Like if you know what's going on, then yeah, sure, it's interesting. But there's a lot of overhead to like learning a board game well enough in order to watch it and to enjoy the content. You have to do a lot of things before you get to that point. So because of that confessional style, it made it really easy. I forgot about the confessional stuff and it unlocked so many memories for me. Yeah, it's super nostalgic. Um, Having the confessionals was really helpful in, I think, breaking that barrier between board gamers and non-board gamers, because a non-board gamer doesn't need to know all the rules because they can hear everyone's individual strategies and go from there, you know? Uh, which is just so cool. So cool, I miss it. Have to go do adulting? No worries, Arliel. Man, now I'm super nostalgic for tabletop. Heck, heck. And I can thank Tabletop for, I, Megan mentioned this earlier, I can thank Tabletop for my friendship with, with the, the folks over at Board Game House uh, because they played Monarch, which was kind of an out of left field pick. They typically only played like really well-known board games, but they played Monarch, which was the flagship board game of Resonim, which is the company I used to work for. And my very first Gen Con ever, uh, I was, you know, working at Gen Con. I was demoing Visitor in Blackwood Grove and Megan and the folks from BGH come over and Megan has got the, the banners from Monarch like painted on her, like she had like a satchel bag thing that had a bunch of like board game stuff painted on them. 
And one of them was the banners from Monarch, right? And she mentioned that the only reason she knew about Monarch is because she saw it on tabletop. So she walked up to us with her little Monarch bag and I was like, yo, hey, that's a cool bag. And she was like, oh, thanks. It's your game. I really like it. I found it on tabletop. Then we went our separate ways. Later, Megan and Derek and Steven start Board Game House. I watch it because they're playing Monarch. Again, game that we made that she'd only found out about through tabletop. And now we're like best friends. And I think that's super cute. Ah, butts I goofed. Oh no, Jamie. Oh no. That's okay. It happens. It happens. I think that's a really good point, Hexstar. Totally, totally agree. Having someone just like explaining their thought process helps make it a lot, a lot more accessible. All right, so I got one compass. I got one arrowhead. Not a whole lot I can freaking do with that. Can't buy anything, so I guess I also pass. All right, it's up to you, Razor and Rennie. But the problem is that like, especially the way Tabletop did it, that adds so much like editing overhead and like it adds so much work to do that. And also it asks a lot more of your guests and your guests need to kind of know how to do that. So like, that's why I think it works so well is because the, the people that Will Wheaton brought on were all people from the entertainment industry. So they knew, they understood the assignment when he's like, hey, do a um, reality TV show style confessional about this board game you just played. Like they could execute that. And I don't think that's a skill everyone has because it's a really weird thing. It must be, I've never done one, but you must like have to go back and like relive moments and talk about them as if they're currently happening. Like that must be super weird. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, it was a whole like production, like a production production. I just miss it though. It makes me super nostalgic. Aw, I miss it. I want to apologize to my meeple dude. I don't think we beat this guardian dragon. Oh no. Yeah, you need a tablet and a arrowhead. Yeah, you might be. You should not have followed my lead. Trying to find a, trying to explore a level one site the first round was a little bit ballsy of me and it I managed to work out for me. But yeah, no, I'm, I, poor dude. It's okay, you just get one fear. You can always go back for it later. All right, round two. God, that's a disgusting hand I just drew. That's terrible. It's very daring and very foolish. Yeah, no, I I set a bad precedent, Renny. You can blame me, I should not have done that. It Again, I lucked into it, but just by, just by a hair. Yeah, does anyone else have any other um, like first memories in terms of board game content that's not, you know, tabletop, shut up and sit down, that sort of crew? Oh my God, my foot is cramping. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh my God. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Okay, I think I got it. Dude, my feet cramp so much. I think it means I need more potassium or something like that. I don't know. All right, so we're going into this round. We can get up to three compasses. So we could go find another level one site. I need to start working on my uh, research track, but I just don't have any of the things I need. Maybe less soy sauce, shut up. <laughs> oi, oi. I still follow gaming rules. I am his, I'm in his Slack channel playing BGA games with the community and him. That's adorable, kick -out. that's awesome. Hell yeah. You, 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 you. No, that's, that's really cool that he takes the time to like play with his community. That's, that's awesome. I could try to go to the site that Rennie discovered if I could get a tablet. 
so I can get that ruby. If I can start moving up this way. I'm not sure. Ooh, Jamie, you got a good sight. That's one of my favorite level one sights is the one that gives you a card and an arrowhead. That's a good one. It's a very good one. But yeah, chat, we've had such beautiful, we've had such beautiful weather here. I'm so happy I got to start, got to start gardening. Do you guys have any like good springtime activities? Cause it's too, it's too like rainy here and stuff for us to do like cookouts and stuff yet because the weather's very predictable here right now. But, but gardening works very well for that, right? Cause you can garden and then it can rain on your garden. It can be all delightful. Uh, but I don't know, what, what do you guys, do you have any like specific springtime activities that y'all, y'all like to do? My spring time, my spring springtime activity is coding. Um, cool, cool. Love that for you. Isn't that your year-round activity though? I am confused. Dying of allergies. Oh my god, my allergies kicked in the other day. Ugh, terrible. <gasps> disc golf. Oh my god. I don't understand disc golf. I don't understand the appeal. Why is this? Hold on, let me reload the page. I don't know why that little pop up showed up there randomly. There we go. <gasps> Going to the Ren Fair. Oh my God, chat. I am I am already planning Ray's Ren Fair Grand Tour. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm gonna take Catskills to her very first Ren Fair and I cannot freaking wait. It kind of sucks because most of the Ren Fair is in New England in the Pennsylvania area the greater New England area containing Pennsylvania. Most of those Ren Fairs don't start until autumn. So most of them are like an August to October run, but the further south you go, the earlier they start. So there's a couple um, sort of like in Ohio and South, um, West Virginia. I don't know why I almost said South Carolina, West Virginia that start like now and start in May. Uh, so I'm gonna try to go down south for a couple uh, in the springtime and then have people come up to visit me in, in the autumn and go to some of the, the Pennsylvania and New York Ren Fairs. Dude, I'm so excited. I freaking love, I freaking love the Ren Fair. I bought, oh my God, I finally invested in like a real outfit. Okay, hold on. Let me take my turn and then I have to tell you about my outfit. Oh my God. It's very exciting. I kind of want to go here and t I'm sorry, Rennie, but I may steal your guardian from you because I want that gem. Yeah. Yeah, Renny, I'm going here. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, what am I gonna... I guess I can do that. That's fine. Yeah. Do we get to see the outfit? Um, I'd have to pull up my Etsy. That's a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> but, so for last year's Ren Fair, my very first Ren Fair ever, uh, we decided to go very last minute, so I just like bought something super quick off Amazon that it worked. I, I loved my outfit last year, but it was not exactly tailored to me in any sense of the word. Uh, but the corset was really nice. For some reason, the corset was great and it fit me really well. So now I'm basing the rest of my outfit off this one corset that I got, because that corset was really pretty and it fit me very well. Um, so that's the start of the outfit. Last year I wore this like plum purple, again, just kind of like Amazon <laughs> peasant dress, which I don't really like that shade of purple. It's not my favorite. Uh, you can see it if you go to my Twitter, it's like my Twitter um, profile picture. Not my favorite. Uh, so this year I'm getting, I'm, I found a woman on Etsy who makes all of these really cool like custom Ren Fair outfits, like this sort of sheer chiffony black, Ren Faire dress and I'm getting what I'm the most excited about what I am the most excited about is I'm getting like what's it called like a skirt holster so I'm getting a belt right I'm getting a leather belt and then I'm getting this like add-on that you put on the belt that's like a little silver loopy ring so you can take your skirt and like put it through the ring so like your skirt is like always kind of hiked up on one side it's gonna look so cute I'm so freaking excited I'm gonna get little knickknacks to put on my belts because I wanna have lots of stuff around my waist. Oh my God. And I got a little loop to hold like a tankard. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I spent oh, way too much money on it. Way too much money. Because the rent for also steals your money when you're there. 
Uh, so it's probably not wise to spend as much money as I spent ahead of time, but it's fine. I'm gonna look so cute. I'm gonna wear it all the time. I'm gonna go to a Ren Faire every weekend, I swear to God. I can maybe pull it up on my phone while I'm waiting for my turn, hold on. I might be able to show y'all what I'm talking about. So I got like a black see-through top and then I'm getting this like light pink skirt to sort of bring out some of the pinks and purples in my corset. So basically the vibe for this outfit is gonna be pastel pink and purples plus like jet black. That's the, that's the combo that we're going for. Here, I find, I show you, I show. So first of all, this is the belty thing I got. Oh my God, it's in transit, that's so exciting. So I got, um, this is like, this is the stupid way to do this. But this is the belt thing I'm talking about. So it comes with this little extender boy. So you take your skirt and you hike it up into that. So your skirt's always kind of asymmetrical, which is so freaking cute. It's so cute, I'm so excited. Oh my glub. And then I got, the, and it's not coming with the corset but the, the the shirt that she's wearing, that like blouse, the corset again, doesn't come with it. I'm gonna have this like pastel pink corset, but this top I got, and then the skirt to again, pull back in the pastel, the pastel vibe that we got going on, uh, is gonna be this skirt. It's gonna be that skirt. I'm So imagine this top is black and I've got all these belts and stuff. Oh, I'm so excited. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Thank you, chat. Thank you for indulging me. My cat has been sitting in the sun by the open window, but now he came over because he's hungry. He smells like spring. Oh my God, I love the smell of spring. I love the smell of like fresh cut grass, the rain, the mud. I'm just ready. This winter was too long. I'm usually a winter girly. I love cold weather. I love the snow. This winter was too long. I am, I am ready for some outdoors time, some spring time. I want one of those loopies too. They look so cool. I feel like they're also really versatile. Like, I feel like they elevate any Ren Faire outfit. So I'm very excited. Sorry, I could talk about the Ren Faire forever. I got to start, I got the start of my outfit. Nice. It's a really awesome dress layer I got the other day. A friend of mine might be making me a belt slash corset for it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hold on, we are talking about spring activities and Ipator says I go honking a lot. Oh, do you mean hiking? You must mean hiking. There's no way you mean honking, right? Before the leaves uh, come back and you get all the nice mountain frost views without any of the blocked views by trees. Oh, nice, I have a tour. God, I do like hiking. I do like hiking. It's a little too muddy here right now. We're still on like the tail end of mud season. So you have to be a little bit careful going hiking this type of this type of season. Yeah, chicken, at first I thought Ipator meant that he was just running around honking at people as like a pastime and I wasn't, I like wasn't that surprised by it. I was like, that's a little weird, but it also kind of tracks, so. <laughs> All right, it's my turn. I gotta overcome this guardian. Um, why did I think I could do it? Oh, cause I can do this and I can go here. That was the plan. I knew there was a plan. All right, I'll get him next time. I did intend to say hiking, but I'd love to go honking. I love the concept of honking as like an activity. Like, oh, I love to go honking on like midsummer nights. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> oh my God, you're totally right, Soften. Uh, Jamie is stacked right now. Oh my goodness. Look at how many resources she has. What are you doing? <laughs> I mean, that's good, but like, I am suspicious that you're hoarding them all. I feel like she's got a secret plan. Midsummer nights honking. Can you use a plane to replace a boot action? Yeah, absolutely. So there's like a hierarchy chart when it comes to traveling in Arnak. I don't know if it's like down here somewhere, but basically you can always use something more expensive for something cheaper. I don't know if there's a picture of it. Uh, I guess there's not. No, there's not. But it's like, you know, a plane can always be used for a boot, but a boot can't be used for a plane, that kind of thing. Same with cars and boats. Cars and boats can be used as boots, but not vice versa. Oh no, Jamie, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, that's tragic. It's tragic. Yeah, soften your razor is correct. <gasps> Yo, what's up, Atom? Thank you for that raid. Welcome on in, friends. If you're from Atom's stream, oh, that 
For some reason, I have this notification like right over my face. That's like not a great spot for it. Let me pop it up here. If you're from Atom Stream, welcome on into the official Check Games Edition Twitch channel. My name is Ray. We are playing some Lost Ruins of Arnak today, which is a game that we make here at CGE. I'm playing with some people from chat. So we've got Soft and Eraser, Jamie Daggers, and Renny May playing with me. I'm currently playing on BGA right now. Welcome on in, everybody. It's nice to meet you. While we're playing, we got a we got a question of the day today. If y'all want to chat about it, our question of the day today is: Tell me about the very first board game content that you ever started watching. And we're talking about that while I slowly get beaten by Soft and Eraser at our neck because I have I'm I have no I have no expectation of winning this game. <laughs> Soft and Eraser is very very good at our neck, so. Yeah, no, I, if you didn't vote for Soft on your razor, you just lost points. I, <laughs> I didn't want to say anything early on because I didn't want to, I didn't want to affect the points economy, but Razor is very good at this game. Question of the day, you shut up and sit down back when they were on Vimeo, I believe. Remember Vimeo? Oh my god. God, I'm so bitter about that now. And we did we did some trivia. We did like CG trivia a while back, and one of the questions was about um what was the first what was the first CG game that Shut Up and Sit Down reviewed? And I think I don't know if it was James Blake, it was so it was someone who knew the Shut Up and Sit Down catalog very well. Uh, and I had the wrong answer. I think I had said it was like Galaxy Trucker or something because that is the oldest CGE review video on their YouTube channel. I was actually completely ignorant to the fact that there was a Vimeo before there was a uh, YouTube channel for Shut Up and Sit Down. And someone was like, well, actually uh, they reviewed uh, Through the Ages on Vimeo before YouTube ever existed. So I got, I got schooled. <laughs> it wasn't you, okay. It was someone else who was very familiar with like early early days of Shut Up and Sit Down. I felt, I was so, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. I'm scared of doing trivia anymore because I always get one thing wrong. I always get one thing embarrassingly wrong and it somehow always has to do with Through the Ages. Yeah, Softener is also a very good teacher of Arnak, 100%. All right, back to me. Let's get rid of this guardian before I completely forget to do it. So we're gonna spend that boot, we're gonna spend the tablet and the arrowhead. Nice. I might as well use this to exile my fear because we don't have time for fear in the jungle chat. But that sounds like something I would do. <laughs> like mention how many times you, <laughs> like mention how many uh, ages there are in Through the Ages. Yeah, that's why I thought it was you, James <laughs> Blake. That is why I thought it very easily could have been you. Ugh, chat. There's so much there's so much going on. I wish I could talk to you more about the cool stuff that's happening. Ugh, soon, chat. Soon, TM. If only I could exile my fear in real life. Does anyone... Okay, question of the day. New question of the day. Well, maybe I don't know. I don't know if I want to go down this rabbit hole or not. D okay, I'm gonna... I'm gonna go down this rabbit hole with the understanding that y'all will not take it weird. <laughs> Does anyone have like a, like a, I don't think about how to phrase it. Like a small fear, like a weird kind of, kind of irrational fear. Nothing like major, you know, like I'm scared of dying or something, but like, I don't know, some, some weird quirky small fear, you know? Wait, there's a hair change high board game yogi. It's not major, but I cut like three or four inches. Also, hi, welcome on in. I'm super scared of moths. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Like weird, weird things like that. That's a valid fear, yogi. Moths are weird. I like them aesthetically when they're like drawn and 2D, but moths in real life, I don't like their texture. They're too like fuzzy. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I've also like seen moths get smushed before and I don't like, the, the, the like fluff, they're like too, when they get smooshed, they just become like fluff in the air. And I don't like that. I don't like that. That's very valid. Chicken, that's also fair. That's also very fair. Animals with like unpredictable movement, totally get that. 
A moth attacked me once and I hid under the covers. It was flying at me under the covers? Yuck! Oh my god, I would be traumatized too. Oh my god, also, can we get a, a shadow command for board game Yogi, please? And thank you, Lollies. It's really good to see you in chat. I hope you've been well. I have fast phallus phobia? I'm not sure what that is, Hextar. But yeah, I got my hair cut a, a wee bit shorter than normal. I'm trying to, I'm trying out like keeping it straight most of the time. I'm a little bit burnt out on curling it all the time. Fear of the ocean. Again, extremely valid fear. The ocean is terrifying. There are untold horrors down there. Totally get that. That's a bummer though that it makes some, that it makes some video games hard to play, but I, I can definitely see that. Oh my god, I need to get up on this research track. I am so very behind. Oh my god. Okay, let's... We can now move up here because we have a gem. That's kind of a boring term, but we, it, need, it needed to be done. Needed to be done. I dislike reptiles. Reptiles are weird. They're scaly. I don't like it. Your character will now dive into the dark water and hold their breath. Mm. I will say I don't like I don't like the depictions of like having to hold your breath. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't do well with that. Not necessarily the water aspect of it, but it's the the concept of like not being able to breathe is very scary. But again, that's a very serious fear. I want I want I'm scared of moths. <laughs> I worry sometimes that I'm not good enough to warp my imposter syndrome. Too real, Eiffator. Too real. Me too. Oh my god. I'm trying to think if I have anything weird like that. Like, again, fears that are valid, but they're not super intense, you know? Oh my god, I love you too! <laughs> Just putting it out there? Oh my god. I, I appreciate that. Heck! Heck! Go follow Lollies. Lollies is amazing. I hope you had a good trip to India, by the way. We'll have to, we'll have to uh, hang out and do a stream sometime soon. Horses scare me? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 100%. Any animal that is bigger than me? Again, makes a lot of sense from, like, um, uh, what's the, like, an evolutionary standpoint. Like, you should be scared of things bigger than you. That's awesome, Alex. I would love to go to India someday. I bet, I bet it was super fun. All right. We got one duder left. I don't know where I want to send him. Hmm. I kind of need, I kind of need some tablets. I'm gonna move my book up. Or I could just go here and get another gem. Let's do that. I think I should get an assistant. So let's pay the boot to get there and then we'll pass the exploration card to get a gem. And that is that. Oh, damn, we still need to do an Arnak rematch. Yeah, girl, hit me up whenever you want. We'll message you and let's figure it out. Awesome, hell yeah, hell yeah. The silly fear category, uh, I'm sort of anxious around Asian people because they sometimes approach me and speak to me in a foreign language. Oh, that's hard. Yeah, because they see that you're also Asian, and so they like assume. Yeah, that's like a that's like a big social anxiety. I I can't relate because no one looks at me and assumes I speak anything but English. <laughs> but yeah, that that must be hard. I mean, I guess the the only time that I've experienced that is when I go to the Czech Republic and they assume I can speak Czech, and I'm like, hmm. But I've just embraced the fact that I'm just I just gonna be a dumb American. There's nothing. Like I first when I first started traveling to Prague for work, I was like. I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna learn conversational Czech. I'm not gonna learn conversational Czech, it's way too hard. Uh, and I just resigned myself to being the dumb American because that, that that's working out for me so far. My brother has an extreme aversion to buttons that are not attached to clothing, like loose buttons. That's really weird. That's really weird. And bobby pins, interesting. Interesting. Thank you. 
I'm terrified of glass floors over heights. Oh, again, feels very valid. Feels very valid. No, I don't trust. I, I have like a distrust of the human race when it comes to that kind of thing. Like, like people will be like, oh, it was built by really smart people. It's not going to collapse. I don't trust that. I don't believe that. I genuinely don't believe that we as a species are smart enough to have glass way up in the air that like doesn't break sometimes. You know, I don't trust that. Mm -mm, I don't like it. Same reason I don't like roller coasters. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many engineers worked on it. My survival instincts are telling me this is a bad idea. So I am listening, listening to that, following my gut. Ooh, yeah, exactly. I have like a distrust of like <laughs> architects and engineers. I just don't believe that anyone that like, I, here's the thing. And this probably says more about me than it says about anyone else. I make mistakes at work all the time, right? But my mistakes don't like put people's lives at risk. Like what if the guy who built this had a bad day and he just miscalculated one degree? Like that's where my brain goes whenever it's like, I'm in a tall building or I'm on a roller coaster or something. I'm like, what if someone miscalculated this? What if they were just having a brain fart day? Human error freaks me out. And I don't like to put my life in the hands of human error. <laughs> my brother's an engineer and I also don't trust engineer. Well, great. That's made it worse. <laughs> like, I'll do it if I have to. But if I ha if I think about it too much, I get very freaked out. What's up? What's up? Great. Um, Combino, it's nice to meet you. Sorry if I mispronounced that. Let me know um, if I if I did. Uh, but well, come on in. It's nice to meet you. I totally agree. Those slingshot rides? Mm -mm. No, I just like don't believe that we are capable of the physics involved in that, and that we know every little minute thing, and that nothing's gonna go wrong. I don't like it. I don't like it. All right, all right, it is my turn. I got like one of everything. I'm gonna move my book up here so I can get an assistant. I'm not like wild about any of the assistants currently on offer, but I could go for money guy. I do like money guy. The, at this point in the game, you're gonna be getting less and less items. I kind of feel like boat guy is the way to go. I'm gonna go with boat guy. All right. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. I'm totally fine with like any ride, but put me anywhere near the edge of a tall building. I just don't trust it. I don't like it. I don't like it. My sister is an aeronautical engineer, but she only designs like the not dangerous parts in the plane, like the toilet. Honestly, that's amazing. Someone's gotta do it. And see there, there you can like work on airplanes, but you're like not responsible if something goes wrong. That's so scary. Oh, is it? Oh, am I the only one who hasn't passed yet? Oh, wow. So special. Uh, I can't move up on the research track unless I get, yeah, no, there's nothing I can do there. I'll tap this for a compass. And I'll get sturdy boots. Do I want sturdy boots or do I want hat? <laughs> I think I want sturdy boots. It's a little bit more flexible. All right, pass On to round three. It's pretty even so far. I don't see anyone running away with it yet, at least. Oh, yo, what's up? Thank you for joining us then, Great Columbo. Or, I want to I wanna call you Columbo. I'm so sorry. My dyslexia has taken over there. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for joining us. Welcome. This is my job. See, I, I wasn't kidding. This is what I do for a living. Welcome. This is Professional Ray, who is still pretty fun, but not After Hours Ray, where we get around her personal stream. Yes, this is, this is professional, Ray. Y'all, speaking about my personal stream, my birthday's coming up next month and I need, uh, I need ideas for what to do. Uh, if you don't know, I have a personal channel which you can follow. Uh, if one of the mods could shout it out, that'd be fantastic. Um, this is like my, my business, <laughs> my business stream, but I have a non-business stream. Uh, and I'm thinking about celebrating my birthday on that other stream sometime next month. But I need thoughts on what to do. Also, I realized that we, I found out yesterday, I was chilling in Jamie's chat. We have very, very similar uh, birthday dates. Hers is May 30th and mine is May 25th. So I kind of feel like we should, we should do something together. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> birthday clock tower raise the demon every every game woo every game i kill you god i, I want to play more clock tower i know the the timing hasn't worked out hexstar but that was so much fun man i want to get an in-person game of that at some point i wonder if i wonder if there's enough like medical students that i could convince to play that with me king of the castle god, i think i need a king of the castle detox 12 hours straight of king of the castle I'm not gonna lie, y'all, I, listen, everybody, I had a lot of fun. The 12 hour King of the Castle stream, really fun. We raised a lot of money for my moderators, uh, but it was too much. It was too, I'm a, it was too much King of the Castle. It was too much, it was bad. <laughs> By the end of that, dude, I, I uploaded that to our YouTube channel. Um, <laughs> and there's something about seeing it in like this 12 hour, one big long 12 hour video. Why did I do that? That was dumb. <gasps> Jamie, oh my God. How'd you even eat that day? I didn't, I just, I just ran on fumes. That was, that was ridiculous. <laughs> somehow, somehow the 12 hour King of the Castle stream was worse than the 15 hour puzzle stream. And I don't know, I don't know why. <laughs> I think it's because King of the Castle necessitates me narrating the entire game. It was so much talking. It was feral. It was feral. That was, <laughs> I think that's about the most feral I can get away with being on this channel. <laughs> that was like, that was the, that was the, that was the lowest I've been. Here's hoping the marathon tomorrow isn't that bad. Jamie, if you're, if you're still listening, we gotta, we gotta put a cap on this mini painting we're doing tomorrow. No more than 10 hours. I swear to God, <laughs> I'll lose my mind. All right, round three. Do I want to try to save up for a level two site? Can I get there? I can get five compasses. Just boom, boom, boom. Oh, Jamie, why'd you already go to the two compass site? You suck, you suck. Why would you do that to me? I don't know, the 15 hour puzzle stream was also so, yeah, it was also real feral near the end. I cried. I, <laughs> I honestly, God believe if Steven hadn't hopped on a Discord call with me at the end of that stream, I don't think I would have made it. That like, I needed someone else. I needed someone else to carry that for me. And same with Jamie. I got saved by Jamie, Eric Yurko, and uh, Steven at the very end of that. Steven was a champ. I didn't realize until I like went back and vodded that video, just how long Steven was on that call with me. He was on the call for like three hours, which is crazy. All right, I need to stop talking and figure out what I'm doing. I feel like a level two site might be out of reach for me this round. But I have... I don't know. I don't know. Discount with it. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I'm gonna do this, because this is like one card. I can get a compass, and I can go with a discount of two boots. It's like a nice... That worked out nicely. That's fine. Wasn't exactly super ambitious, but I'll take it. I don't necessarily need to be the first person to discover the volcano, it's okay. Where are we gonna pay for 14 hours? That's not funny, Jamie. I have stuff to do. <laughs> Thank you for being such a good sport though. I like texted Jamie uh, the other day and I was like, hey, do you wanna paint minis for an ungodly amount of time with me on Friday? And this is why Jamie's my, my favorite person. She was just like, yeah. She was like, of course I do. No questions asked when and where I'll, I'll be there for you. What a queen, honest to God. Yeah, Jamie, we need to play Blood on the Clock, Blood on the Clock Tower together, 100%. Hey, <laughs> what's up, G? Welcome on in. Completely agree, Kit Kat and Alkali, totally. <laughs> But yeah, no, I really, I really liked Blood on the Clock Tower. The twist it did, um, the twist it does on social deduction is quite cool. My, my, I mean, I talked about this before when I played it with Hexstar that first time. Um, my only complaint about it is that there's, a, there can be sort of a skill difference issue where if someone plays a lot of Blood on the Clock Tower, they can math it out in a way that someone who's just learning can't, because there's so much roll interaction 
because everyone has a role in Blood on the Plateau, which is what I like about it. One of the things that gets stale with something like Werewolves of Miller's Hollow is that if you're a good guy, you're just a good guy. And sometimes you're just a regular werewolf. Like there's not, there are those fun extra roles, but someone's gotta be a regular villager in Werewolf, right? For it to like work out. With Blood on the Clock Tower, everyone has a role that can do something special, which is really cool to make everyone feel invested. But it does mean that there's like a lot of specific ways that these different roles interact with each other. And if you play the game a lot, you might have a better understanding of those nuances, which can sometimes make it hard to play with a mixture of experienced players and non-experienced players, but like, meh, meh, I enjoyed it. <gasps> Hexstar, shut up, please. I wanna be the first person you text about that. Oh my God. I think that's the other thing is I wanna play in person. Like Hexstar did an amazing job of running that online game, but for me, social deduction games are at their peak in person, late at night, that's what I want. Yeah, me me and Jamie are there, Hexstar. God, I'm so excited for Gen Con. Oh my God. It's so far away still, chat. Uh-huh, I just want to be at Gen Con. Yo, what's up, JD? Welcome on and how's it going? Happy, happy Thinky Thursday. Um... Three months away, yeesh, so far. I want it now. I hate that I just got this gem and I immediately have to give it up for this, for this guardian. That's a, that's a bummer. Oh, sorry, my captions are just not, they just like stop every now and then. It's very, very frustrating. I apologize, chat. I should just do this guardian before I forget. Cause that's what will happen if I don't get a guardian, if I don't overcome a guardian as soon as I draw it, I forget and then I get stuck with a hand that can't fix it. So I'm gonna pass my, f actually, 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 I wanna leave a boat icon for me just to leave that open. So I'll do the that funding instead, the one that has a car. All right, I have two planes now. I've got crazy free travel icons. I've got to actually do something with those next round. It's really hard to do Blood on the Clock Tower as the demon when you've never played before because it's so dang hard to know what to do since you've got no idea what info is useful slash not to try and fake. I mean, yeah, that that's the hard thing with all social deduction games is that if you're the bad guy on your first time, you don't know what to lie about, which is, is really hard. Uh, and I wouldn't say Blood on the Clock Tower like has a solution to that either, um, but I wouldn't say it's, um, an issue that's specific to Blood on the Clock Tower. I think it's kind of real with all social action games, but I mean, I guess if they're really simple, like Werewolf, you can just be like, it wasn't me. But that's also, with Werewolf, that's all you can say. You can just be like, it wasn't me. And the person who's the best at saying it wasn't me wins, which is annoying, so. I don't know. Social action games are such a volatile genre, you know? They're so hard to do well. That's true, Hexstar, that's very true. You have someone who's like in your corner by default. <gasps> oh my God, Jamie, yes. You, me, Rachel, other Rachel, not me, Rachel, uh, playing Blood on the Clock Tower would be amazing. I have to say, I was offered a late night game of Blood on the Clock Tower at PAX U, uh, and I was very glad when it got canceled because I committed to that before I was at PAX U. I got a text that was like, hey, do you wanna set aside midnight blood on the clock tower on Saturday? And when you're not at a convention, you're like, yeah, I can stay up late till midnight and play blood on the clock tower. Mm -mm. I was so tired. It got canceled last minute because the person who was running it had something come up. Um, but yeah, no, I was, the, the relief I felt with my midnight blood on the clock tower game Saturday night of PAX U got canceled was immense. That was a bad idea. I should not have said yes to that. Best social deduction game is Unfathomable. Great game with little social deduction. Hmm, I don't know that I've ever heard about that, Ifator. I'll have to I'll look at it after the game. Welcome on in, RPN, RPN T TV. It's nice to meet you. Welcome on in. I just started watching, is this Board Game Arena? Yes, it is. This is our game, one of the games that we make here at Check Games Edition, uh, Lost Runes of Arnak, and this is its free 
BGA implementation that we're playing with some members of chat right now. Also, it's very nice to meet you. Thank you for hanging out with us. Welcome to the Czech Games Edition Twitch channel. We are a board game publisher. We make all the games that you can see behind me. My name is Ray. I'm the in-house content creator here. I stream three days a week, uh, except for this week, because my roof was leaking on Tuesday. But yeah, we play a bunch of CGE games. We play non-CGE games. We just hang out. I got 30 seconds to take my turn. I got to stop yakking and actually do something. Hmm, I don't like any of my choices right now. Um, I feel like we haven't had a lot of research track movement across the board because I feel like I'm behind, but at the same time, kind of no one is making it super far up yet. I'm on the clock. Oh God. Okay. It's yelling at me. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Okay. 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 It's going to yell at me until I go. So I'm going to discover a new site. I'm going to go here. I'm going to use one of my free planes. I'm going to untap Sailor Man and please give me something good. Ooh, either two compasses or a free item. Yo. Oh my God. Yeah, let's get the airplane. Let's go. Nice. That is a very, very good free card to get. <laughs> Stop yakking and do something <laughs> doesn't sound very Ray. She would never. It goes against her brand. <laughs> oh, it's a reskin of Battlestar Galactica. Really? Huh. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, I don't quite know how to say your name. B Mordu uh, says, pre-convention, you want to say yes to everything, then reality sets in. Yeah, mm-hmm. That would honestly be one of my biggest pieces of advice to someone going to their very first con that even I don't follow all the time. <gasps> Thank you. The water boy is getting me water. Um, that even I don't always follow, which is like, don't, don't commit to things you don't have to commit to before you get there. Like some things, yes, like this Blood on the Clock Tower game, it was like very, it wasn't like secret, but it was like, it wasn't a publicly advertised game. It was like the spots were going really quickly. A lot of people wanted in and it was like, if you want in, you've got to agree to it two weeks in advance. Try to avoid that kind of thing, especially if you've never been to a con before. You don't know, um, you don't know how you're going to be feeling on the day. And especially like, again, you've never been to a show before. You don't understand how tired you are. Even if you're like, I'm just walking around. Even if you're not working the show like someone like me is, it's still exhausting to be on your feet all day, socializing nonstop. It's hard to know how you, your body and also how your mind is going to react to that once you're actually in it. So Yo, what's up, uh, Kiyoshi? It's good to see you. I feel like I butchered that. Have you told me how to say your name? Hold on, let me look. <gasps> Thank you for the water. I love you. Get the coffee away from me. I'm too jazzed. I'm too jazzed. Okay, you said Q say shoe. Q say shoe. Q say shoe? God, that's still not intuitive to me, but thank you for joining us again. It's good to see you. Thank you for putting up with my bad pronunciation. Like learning the bad pipes. Oh my God. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Yo, Tantaralis, welcome on in. Happy uh, Thinky Thursday. What's up? Totally soften your razor. You can always get on. You can always get on uh, waitlist. And yeah, underbook yourself is one of my biggest tips. Because your eyes are bigger than your stomach before a show. You want to do everything. But you're not going to have fun if you're exhausted and you're tired. It's not going to be fun. All right. I need two coins and an arrowhead to overcome Beetle Man. Ugh. Ugh, I don't have any of that. I can use this to activate this guy. So that's that. I can get one coin. Two coins is very annoying though. My general rule is to do as little as possible at all times. I can confirm. <laughs> I can confirm that is Chi's motto. Is there a way for me to get this guardian? I mean, there is if I expend both of my idols. I don't like the idea of only having one idol spot open though at the end of round three. I don't like that idea though. Do 
Do I have a choice though? Unless I want to get fear? Huh? God, stupid beetle. Of course, of course. Well, I can do this to get, okay. I can do it where I only use one idol because I can use that to get the arrowhead. Then I can use funding and one idol to get this slot down here. That'll work. I don't love it, but it'll work. I think I underuse idols when I play this game. Yeah, it's it's definitely a learning curve of understanding when and how to use them. Cause I was the same way. When I first started playing this game, I was terrified to use my idols cause it feels really scary to cover up these points right here. But it's typically worse to like leave yourself in a sticky situation, like not overcoming a guardian or something is typically worse. But you know, I mean, like think about it. Overcoming this guardian gets me five points which is worth it. If I cover up this, that loses me two points, I'm still netting three points, you know? But you also wanna be careful because if you end you end up in round five with no idle slots, that can sometimes leave you with not a lot of flexibility. So yeah, Min and Elwin, as, as Softened Eraser says, Min and Elwin suggests you use the idols. Uh, I'm just still not great about knowing when to pull the trigger, you know? I've gotten over my fear of using them, but I'm still unsure about like the best times to use them and when I should save them and stuff. Also, welcome on in Mella. Mella, how are you? How's your week going? It's good to see you. And Lay Schmiggles, welcome on in. Happy Thinky Thursday to you both. I don't think I played a round of Arnak where this many tier one guardians were gone this early. Yeah, we've been very, um, explorer heavy this game. Very explorer heavy. Wouldn't it be more economical to use the lantern to get two coins? To get two coins, then the idol for the arrowhead? Huh. That would leave the funding for extra. Oh! Yes, if I had used the lantern to go here to get two coins, yes. You are probably right, Schmiggles. <laughs> that probably would have been the better move. I think you're right. But what's done is done, unfortunately. Ooh, ooh. Ah. All right, let's get these coins so we can get this stupid guardian. All right, I'm gonna get this guy, ba blam blam. Amazing, amazing. Three guardians already, Ray? Sitting booby traps over there? It's all I got, Razor. I have done absolutely nothing in terms of research track. I'm banking on getting a lot of guardians this game. It's all it's all I got going for me. <laughs> but thank you for noticing. I've worked hard on them. Would have just saved you a coin shrug. Who knows how important that'll be down the road. I swear to God, you've jinxed it now, Schmiggles. There's gonna be a card I want on the very last hand and I'm gonna be missing one coin. Damn it. Yeah, Snake Temple is hard too. That's true. We have to contextualize this under the fact that we're not playing against the, the regular temple. We're playing on the flip side. <laughs> Jeez. Having a busy day, having a busy work week, but thanks for spiffing up my day with Arnak Mella. Thank you for joining. I'm glad that we can, we can brighten your day a little bit. I really appreciate it. Sorry to hear you've been having a busy work week, but I can 100% relate. My, my week has just been, it's been something. You are, you are all very lucky right now that you're getting my undivided attention because I have just been in an endless loop of frantically checking base camp, frantically checking my email, frantically checking base camp, frantically checking my email. Cause I have some very, God, I want to talk about it so bad, Chad. I can't, it's not that I can't, there's no like legal reason I can't. I just feel like I should save it. I should save the announcement, but I'm working on something that involves emailing a lot of people, involves emailing a lot of people that I personally am a fan of, which I don't know if anyone has done that before in like a work context, if anyone's ever worked with like influencers or something. It's so scary. It's so scary. I'm so anxious. I got like four hours of sleep last night. I had terrible nightmares about it. I just want everyone to like me. Oh my God. <laughs> am I turning into a spammer? No. Well, that's the thing is like, not to like complain because I have such a fun job, but like I work with a lot of creators, right? And there's a balance that I don't know how to hit of like, what if this person just hasn't seen this email versus like, oh, they don't want to talk to me. I should stop bothering them. And I don't know where that line is sometimes. I don't know. It's scary and hard. 
Make sure you sign all your emails. Love that. Best wishes. God, I saw a TikTok yesterday that was like, you should start signing your emails with have the day you deserve, which is so good. It's so good. I don't know if anyone, if anyone in chat is in a more like soulless corporate setting. Cause I feel like if I'm like really trying, cause most of the emails I send are me trying to get people like to do streams or to do like collaborations and stuff. And I need to like be like, thanks so much, cheers. I need to be like really nice because I want them to know like I'm nice, come hang out with me. But I feel like if you're sending more like cold business emails, have the day you deserve is so good. That's such a good ender. It's like not appropriate for the type of emails I send, but if anyone out there can use that, please do have this free wisdom. I feel like I get reported. Gee, I feel like it would work well in your in your job setting though. That sounds so passive aggressive. I know, I love it. Well, it's just it's just it's just the truth. Have a good day if you deserve it. Have a bad day if you don't deserve it. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> Yo, what's up, Mad Scientist? Welcome on in. Yo, I'm sorry, I, I missed you for a second. Welcome, Mad Scientist. How's your how's your Thursday going? How do I know if I'm in the Arnak queue? I redeemed some points for it, but that was a while ago. I can check and tell you. If you've never used it, then you're still in there. They never like expire or anything. So if you've never redeemed it or you've never like cashed in on it, then you're still in the queue. The trick is to just be here at the top of the stream because uh, I typically pull the people pretty quickly. Um, now I'm in like a weird spot where I don't know what to do with my life and my turn. I've got access to two compasses and a bunch of travel icons. I need, but what I need is to get up the stupid research track. Oh my God. I'm not getting anywhere, chat. This is, this is terrible. This is terrible. God, if only I had a coin, I could use this spot. I mean, I guess I might as, oh, 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 I have the biggest brain. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna get that. That's gonna get me in uh, the gem because it's an artifact, not an item. And yeah, then I can move up the research track. Let's go. Yo, what's up, DBX Runner? Welcome on in. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you, Aklife, for confirming that. I appreciate it. God, why are my captions being so terrible today? It's cause someone complimented them at the top of the stream. Someone said they were great, and now they're like, hmm, <laughs> I can start slacking off now. What if I, hold on, let me, I wonder if I sent them. What if I did that? Does that, I wonder if that'll make it any better. Oof, when I was using uh, males in job, I worked as a corp rat. What is a, oh, I'm assuming corp, corporate? Corporate on high position. So using this would make people so many people uncomfortable or mad. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> today are they not random word generators? I know. Ugh, sometimes it's fine and sometimes it's just, just the worst. Um, but I'm assuming this was just a, just a typo, but you said corp rat, which just makes me think of like a corporate rat, which is kind of, kind of all I am when you think about it. People are mad they're just tattling on themselves. Exactly. They know that they don't deserve a good day. Dude, it's so mean. It's so terrible, but it's funny. Things and corp rat Ray. Oh, I love that. I love that. God, I, I mean, all jokes aside, board games are one of like the least corporate, corporate industries in the world. Just rat jam with a top hat. I don't remember what the context was, but I was talking about that recently with someone about how like this industry is so backwards in so many ways where like with most industries and corporate settings, you know, you have to dress like business casual and stuff, right? To like events and industry parties and stuff. In board games, you get like hardcore judged. People are like immediately suspicious of you if you like dress too nice in board games. It's like, it's very funny. It's very backwards. No, you'll never see 
not never. I mean, some people just have really good fashion senses and they just dress great all the time. But like, you'll very rarely see someone in from like the board game industry at a board game industry event, like in a suit or something. And if you do, most people are like real suspicious. And if people are not suspicious, it's usually because it's like a suit with like a giant meeple pattern or like superhero logos all over it. Like quirky suits are fine. Regular actual businessman suits will get people immediately suspicious of you. Not saying that some people don't do it and are like not really in the industry. Some people do it, but it's like not the norm. I was thinking about this recently. Yeah, it's super weird. Like people will take you more seriously if you're just like in shorts and a t-shirt because that's what everyone in board games wears. Again, some people have like amazing fashion senses and just are always looking amazing. Um, but it's typically, it typically doesn't manifest in like suit formal attire forms, you know? Like if you don't, hold on, let me take my turn. I'm so sorry. <laughs> just wanna talk. I don't think I can do any more research track stuff. I only have coins and compasses. So I think that's the end of the line for me there. I'll tap and get that compass. Now I've got two. So let's get some, uh, let's get some coins. Got a pretty decently big deck. So I might actually be able to make use of grappling hook. Yeah, I'll, I'll use grappling hook. It's also two points at the end of the game. Uh, but yeah, like you'll see people like the, the first person that pops into my mind, Omari Akil, if you don't know who that is, uh, like made rap gods and hoop gods. One of the most stylish people I've ever met on. Uh, he'll always look amazing. But like, it's typically not walking around like in suits and stuff. People will dress really cool, but it won't be like your typical business casual business attire. Um, <gasps> yeah, his music is so good. Oh my God, Omari's so cool. Note to self, tuxedo for CG Gen Con meetups. Oh my God. I wanna get, I've been trying to petition CG to get me something other than a polo though. Like I would rather have like a, like a suit jacket or something. I mean, again, I just talked about how it makes people immediately suspicious of you, but I think if it had like a giant CG logo and so, or something on it, I could get away with it. Cause I don't like, don't tell, don't tell anybody, but I hate the polos. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them and I don't want to wear them. <laughs> polos are the worst. They're not flattering on anyone. They're not flattering on anyone. I've complained to Tom about this so many times. I feel like being immediately suspicious of Ray tracks though. Jeez, G. Way to, way to call me out. All right, it's just you and me, Soften. Just the two of us in old, I feel like we've got a little old style Western duel going on. I think I'm gonna crap out though. I don't think there's anything left I can do. So it's all you. It's all you, Razor. I'm out. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. I've just been too lazy. Tom has told me that I can do something else, but I have to like conceptualize what that is and get it CGE branded. And that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> like some polos can be okay. There are iterations of the polo that can be okay. Most corporate polos are not that though. That's kind of what I want. See, this is kind of where this conversation comes from, right? Cause I think in a void, I, I like how I look in suit jackets. I wear, like when I do formal attire, that's typically my go-to is like all black suit jacket kind of situation. And that I would love to have like a suit jacket that maybe has the CGE logo on the back or like a little lapel pin that says CGE or something like that. That would be, I think that'd be so clean. I think that'd be so sleek. That's what I like. But the problem is, is that I worry that I will actually not be taken as seriously because the, that CG polo, you see me in that and you're like, oh, yep, she's, she's legit. She's in a board game branded polo. And you know what I mean? Like, is a corporate basketball singlet? Honest to God, I don't think anyone would bat an eye at that. Genuinely at a convention, if I saw a booth of people filled with like singlets and like a, some company logo, I'd be like, yeah, that tracks. It's hot in here. That's valid. Who is this outsider corporate plant? That's the conundrum. Cause I think that's what I would be most comfortable in, but I feel like it would be, it'd be, people would be a little suspicious. And people are already suspicious of me. <laughs> Mm, but having multiple
multiple layers. Interesting. So it's not about like the weight of what you're wearing. It's about the fact that it's layered. That's interesting. Or something not breathable. I get that. I get that. <laughs> How do you do, fellow kids? <laughs> Well, I already have to contend with the fact that like, there's not a whole lot of like younger women in this industry. So a lot of people are like surprised when they see me. And then if I also roll up in a suit jacket, I don't think it helps. I don't think it, I don't think it helps that, that bias I have to already overcome. Just roll around the con. That would be a dream. A CGE branded Zorb. <laughs> Maybe a suit with a funny tie. That's the thing is if, again, suits are okay if they're like zany, if it, they've got like weird patterns, but I don't like suits with weird patterns. So I'm in a, I'm in a bind. All right, we got a new hand round four. I'm gonna try not to take forever with my turn. So let me, let me think for a second. I'm gonna start with a grappling hook. I'm gonna pass the fear to draw a new card. Hopefully it's better. Nice, nice. And I will exile that fear and that's my turn. Beautiful, beautiful. God, I would love like, I would love to do like a Katamari cosplay or something. That'd be great. Rolling around a giant ball the whole time. Just wear it with weird shorts. <laughs> See that again, that would save it. The weird shorts, people would be like, oh yeah, tracks. <laughs> that's so, that's so great. You're the mullet of, mullet of your life. God, I have been, chat, I've been thinking heavily about getting a mullet someday. I really want one. I keep seeing pretty ladies with mullets on my like TikTok timeline. It's very upsetting because I know I can't pull one off but I want one really badly. <laughs> Do it where you want, because it's now becoming a trend. See, I've always thought mullets look cool, but the thing for me is that I cannot wear a hairstyle that doesn't have bangs. The bangs are a necessity. No one can see my forehead. That's where I keep my secrets. And not a whole lot of hairstyles go with blunt, thick bangs that start almost at the back of my head. <laughs> like I have, it, this makes it hard to like work with other things, right? But it's now becoming a thing to wear mullets with bangs, like shorter bangs, like kind of micro bangs, but with bangs nonetheless. And now this has opened up a whole new horizon for me. Heck, Alkali, heck. <laughs> way, way to yuck my yums, man. <laughs> Difficult to play board games through a hamster ball. Mm, true. If you had little hand arm, if you had like little armholes that popped out, <laughs> you just pop out of the ball and like play through that. Wait, hold on. Board Game Insider on the bottom concert, Woodwind on the top. Jesus. shirt and a hoodie in the winter once it starts freezing no sooner slim tank tops yeah i get that i i only wear like real clothes when i need to stream otherwise i'm 100 in t-shirts and hoodies all the time interesting so business casuals on the bottom of the ranking interesting i think i kind of agree with that though because business casual is so annoyingly nebulous it's frustrating. Like I know what formal, I know what business is. I know what casual is. I know what formal is. Business casual feels like a trap. No matter what, it feels like a trap. I'm so close. Okay, I guess I can do, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Then let's use the airplane to go. Uh, geez, I guess, I guess here. And I can use my plane icon that I have. Beautiful. 
I guess I probably should use the car instead. Whatever. That's fine. Oh, crap. I could have gotten a compass and I got a coin. Damn. All right, fine. I don't know that I'm going to be able to do this guy. God, no one has made any progress on this research track. This is brutal. You think Thanksgiving is formal so your opinion is moot? I never said it was formal. You dress nice for Thanksgiving in my family. Not like, like other families, what other families do for Easter is like what my family does for Thanksgiving. Like you, you, you put on pants, you know? Like I don't wear leggings to Thanksgiving di or Thanksgiving dinner. That's the, truly for me, the formal and dressing nice means I'm not wearing leggings. That's, that's the big, that's the dividing line. <laughs> so formal. All right, what's the dividing line for you? When does an attire become like formal? Cause the difference between formal and business is a little, is a little fuzzy for me. So a nice CG pull and some overly baggy khakis. Yeah, that's, that's the fit. Oh man, this could, I could not have gotten a worse guardian. I really couldn't have. I guess I can take this dude. I guess I can go here. I can go here and I can get one of the compasses I need and I can get an arrowhead. All right, let's... Dude, I don't have a boat though. Come on. Ugh, I guess I could go here and draw a card. That's second best. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll spend the car. I'll go there. Please give me something good. Yeah. All right, lovely, lovely. I'll take it, I'll take it. It worked out, it worked out. I feel like I'm doing really good in this game and I think that means I'm losing. I feel like whenever I am overly confident in Arnak, it means I'm doing absolutely terrible. <laughs> Seeing you in a suit at a con while also hauling enough streaming gear to be considered freight <laughs> instead of a passenger <laughs> would be a look. You raise a good point. You raise a good point. I feel like a suit is kind of not practical given the type of streaming I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, Mella. <laughs> Y'all, I'm trying to convince CG to buy me like a steady cam so I don't have to carry around a gimbal. So I'll have like a thing that hangs over my head. Ugh. For me, formal is anything with buttons or sleeves. Interesting, casual or business casual is about as formal as I'll go, which is a dress with a, which is dress pants and a decent polo and a t-shirt slash hoodie. Informal is pajamas. Got you, got you. Buttons on the sleeves. Oh, I see. I see the distinction. To the full work from home news anchor. Oh my God. And wear suit, top, and then gym shorts. Iconic. I didn't mean or sleeves. I mean, I <laughs> you're right, you're right. Two very different, two very different vibes. Also, did y'all, sorry, I just clicked onto Discord and it showed me the, the content announcement thing that I made. Uh, did y'all see the new uh, promo graphic? I'm so happy with it. That's gonna be the new format going forward for promo graphics. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'm 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 really really happy with it. I think that's my favorite. Beyond the the new banner for the channel, of course, is amazing. But beyond that, I think my favorite new thing that Stefan's made is that um, that new template for the graphics. I think it just it, like everything's bigger. The faces are bigger. Like the important information I think is more apparent. I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. God, Razor is just kicking our butts, but she hasn't moved her, it's so interesting. You've only focused on your, on your magnifying glass. I think kind of for this temple, you kind of have to do that. It's hard to really move them both up evenly. <laughs> It looks so fresh. No worries, 
Miss Chicken, thank you for modding. Thank you for hanging out. I love you very much. Have a wonderful, have a wonderful afternoon. We'll see you tomorrow for the, for the marathon. All right, we can move. We can do a couple things now. We've got, ugh, I should do this. I should do this guarding though before I forget. I will before gore if I don't do it right now. So let's do that to get the two compasses that we need. Oh, I can't do that yet. I have to just wait my turn. Heck, all right, um, I'll be RB real quick chat while I'm waiting for my next turn. Give me one second. Okay, welcome back. Welcome back to me. What the hell is, is it cheese? Cheese something? What the hell is this chat, man? <laughs> Business formal Zorb. <laughs> That's awesome. Ooh, just in time for my, for my turn. Oh, cheese steak, of, of course. How, God, I'm so bad at chat, man. Even when the, even when the word is somewhat normal, I'm terrible at it. All right, so now we're doing our guardian, nothing super interesting, and that's our turn. Cheesesteak is a pretty normal word. <laughs> Wait, okay, question. Is cheesesteak a thing anywhere outside of America? For our non-US viewers, do you or do you not know what a cheesesteak is? And if you don't know what it is, tell me what you think it is. I have so many questions. Also, I love chat, man, so much. It's such a good, it's such a good break activity. TY to Alkali for making it. I've heard of it, but I don't know what it is. Interesting. Both Zorb and a suit at a con sound like a ca sound like casual sweaty, which is also a race to Overwatch style. Way to, way to call me out, G. Jesus. Okay, uh, you, you think it's a giant slab of cheese on a grill? Okay, all right. Alkali, do, what do you, what do you think it is? Wow, I, I, it just occurred to me that it's just an American thing. Yeah, Jamie, I haven't played in a hot minute, but we should, we should definitely make that happen. Skill cap bing bong. <laughs> I'm sorry, that'd be a great Overwatch screen name. Skill cap bing bong, that's real good. I love that. 
Deep fried steak with cheese inside of it. Ew. God, is this our legacy? Is this our reputation? I'm not terribly surprised. Skill cap bing bong. That's so good. All right. Now, finally, Jesus, we can finally start doing the things that I wanted to do. So we can move up here, which let me draw a card. All right, nothing amazing, but I'll take it. That word is gonna be so awful in chat, man. Skill cap bing bong. Yeah, the thing is, the thing, one of the things I love about chat, man, is that it's forced, well, in theory, not in practice, but in theory, it would force you all to be less chaotic with your chaos name suggestions because not only does it come back to haunt me when we play chaos names, it also comes back to haunt you when you play Chatman, but that has not been the reality. It has not stopped anyone from entering the most cursed stuff imaginable. <gasps> Ooh, I we don't have any Brigitte in our in our squad, so you'd be filling a void. You don't see her played very much anymore, which is weird. I think she like kind of operates weirdly in the meta now. Yeah, so now all of you non-Americans, you can go ahead, you can go ahead and look up uh, cheesesteak. It is none of the things you suggested. It's literally just like kind of shredded, I don't think really is the right word, but like very slinly, thinly sliced, almost like a pulled pork texture, but I don't know what the phrase for that is, but with, with uh, steak and then a bunch of melted cheese and like peppers. And it's like a Philly thing. It's chopped, oh, it's shaved. What did I say, shredded? Yeah, that felt cursed coming out of my mouth. Uh, chopped or shaved beef with cheese. It is all right. I've been to Philly many times and I gotta say, it's like fine. I don't know. There are better ways for steak to be, to be transported into my mouth. I don't like, I don't like it in cheese. I mean, it's like fine. It's, it's like steak and cheese. Like you can't go wrong, but I would much rather have like a burger or like an actual steak or something. Yeah, th there's really no reason to combine them. I don't think it elevates either either thing. And I know that is Pennsylvanian slander, but it's how I feel. I don't know what either of those things are, mad scientist. I feel like I've heard of Geno's before, but I have no, I have no idea. Yeah, G, you're not wrong. Philly wrecks Philly to celebrate Philly. Philly's a strange place, chat. Oh my god, chat's moving very fast. Hold on, let me let me take my turn and then I'll I'll read the hot takes. Uh, so I can make it up here because I got plenty of idols to spare. Oh, I can either get this guy or I can get this guy. Hmm, I think at this point point in the game. We have one turn left. Jeez. I'll go with this guy. Sure. I'm trying, chat. I'm trying. Wait, okay. What is happening? Let me, let me scroll back. What on God's green earth is going on? Jamie says, okay, but can we all agree that fake cheese? Uh-oh. I see where this is headed. Just makes things better. Oh no, Jamie, I know it's not real. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you activated our trap card. Or good for me, or maybe even food, but like nacho cheese makes everything good. Oh, Jamie, I gotta, I gotta disagree with you. And I hate disagreeing with Jamie, but I don't, I disagree. <laughs> this might be our first fight. I don't wanna fight, Jamie, I don't wanna fight anymore. But I don't, I, I gotta agree with Alkali here. Maybe less strongly. Like if I get food and it has fake cheese on it, I'll survive. Like I won't not eat it or like send it back. But if I have the choice, like my, my biggest pet peeve is when burgers in the States always come with American cheese. And I just don't, I mean, I don't know if American cheese classifies as fake cheese or not. It depends on where you draw the line. I consider American cheese fake cheese. Nothing about that is like regular cheese texture. I will always swap it out for cheddar cheese if I can. I agree. Having cheese in a can is barbaric, 100%. But the, I think there's different degrees of sin here, you know? I think American cheese, it happens. It, it's on a lot of stuff, whatever, I'll survive. 
I will draw the line at like cheese whiz though. Like cheese in a can is where I draw the line. American cheese is deaf fake. Yeah, but some people don't agree with that. Some people like don't believe that it's fake cheese. All right, chat, drop your favorite, drop your favorite cheese in the chat. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a sucker for a really, really sharp, uh, really, really sharp, like New England style cheddar cheese. Okay, let me rephrase nacho cheese specifically is great. <laughs> you gotta walk back that inflammatory statement, Janie. Whoa there. <laughs> All right. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Is there anything else I can and want to do? Yes, I can play this. It will get me a fear, but I think I should do it. I should do it, yeah. Yeah, Jamie, like I am, I won't draw the line at American cheese. If I get it on a burger or something, I, my fear of <laughs> inconveniencing other people outweighs my dislike of American cheese. I'll eat it. It's fine. But if something comes with like a cheese in a can situation, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. Provolone on cheese steaks is so much better. So much better than American cheese. Like I get that in a, in a vacuum, in a void, it like tastes good, but I can't get the imagery of the concept of like i'm eating plastic out of my head like american cheese just looks feels plasticky does anyone here know a czech word i don't know how to pronounce i don't know let me look it up i might recognize it i'm assuming it's a dish or something let me look oh let me take my turn first uh ba -ba -ba, ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah we're gonna move up here say hi to renny up in this spot I will flip over this guy. All right, let me look it up. I might recognize it once I see it. But I also might not. You never know. Oh. No, I've never seen this before. It is a mature cheese made of skim milk. It has a completely unique spicy flavor. I don't trust anything that's defined as a, what was it? Completely unique spicy flavor. I don't like that. I don't like, I don't like that. Mm -mm. I don't know what that means. What do you mean completely unique? I don't trust that. All right, pass. It's time for, oh, I have a, ba -ba -ba. Oh, I should use this. Um, but I can't, unless I do that and then I do this. Still can't afford anything, so I have to pass them. I hadn't really, hadn't really thought about that. The site you occupy, do not occupy the site. Huh. Yeah, I wish I could activate this guy, but there's actually nothing I can afford. Which is a bum, bum hair. Womp womp. All right, round five, everybody. Let's go. <laughs> Not bum hair. Ooh, all right, I go first. God, what is this hand? What do you, I have invested so much in actually building up my hand. What, ugh, seriously? I draw four starting cards. Gross. Gross. Ugh. All right, I need card draw. I don't really know where I'm gonna get it. I guess I can start by doing this and getting this guy. Come on. Are you? You're joking. You're joking. Are you? All the other cards in this deck are good cards that I've bought. This is like all that's left of my starting hand. Ugh. Pain. Pain, chat. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Ugh. This hurts my soul. I, I usually don't go super heavy into like the deck building side of this game. And I feel like I invested strongly this game. And it is not, not pulling out of my favor this last round. 
your bag turned into a, your deck turned into a bag from quacks. Swallowed all your good stuff into the void. It do be like that, truly. Okay, hold on. Let me go back to reading about this skim cheese. Let me let me pull up that tab. So it said, it, beyond it having a completely unique spicy flavor, it also has a typical smell surface with a golden yellow cover. Ugh, this cheese is very easy to recognize by its strong scent, distinctive pungent taste, and yellowish color. What the? This does not look like cheese. It looks, it looks like kind of a gelatin type. What? Man, the Czech Republic has got some weird food, man. Sounds like dehydration. Ooh. Okay, where do we draw the line on string cheese? Is string cheese real cheese or fake cheese? <laughs> Funky smell and deep golden color. Yep. 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 I mean, I bet it's good. I, I, I like most cheeses. I don't love super like soft cheeses, but in general, I'm, I'm a sport when it comes to most cheeses. Yeah, it's crazy, but eating it with Czech beer, oh my, wow, wow. <laughs> I feel like I've heard that more than once from a Czech person where they're like, listen, this food is weird, but you drink it with Czech beer and everything's fine. <laughs> I'm like, yes, beer is good, but this does not negate the fact that this looks weird and I don't really want to eat it. <laughs> You're not the first Czech person to tell me like, hey, have some beer, it'll taste better. <laughs> That's awesome. God, I have I have like no resources going into this round. I need to draw all these billion and a half cards I've spent so long curating. So maybe we start by going here. Cause that has some card draw. Play that and let's go here. Oh, I can't because I can't use a boot for that. Damn. Alright, fine. I will spend I'll spend a coin to get there. I swear to god. Okay, thank you. There are my there are my cards. There's my lantern. mad scientist but on string cheese is actually is exactly as fake as American cheese don't get it twisted got so many compasses. Sheesh. All right, she's going. She's going up top. God, this research track is so tricky. I need three tablets to move my my magnifying glass. That is brutal. me up four points. Hmm. I could just go here and get this site again. Gives me a lot of good stuff. Hmm. That's cool though. That's cool though, Q. Someone say beer. Welcome back, Lion. What's up?
God, you can't even discover a level one site anymore. I could get two compasses, three, four. God, I keep getting stuck at five. Because I'd love to try to get another level two site, but I don't think it's gonna... I don't think it's gonna work out that way for me. here if I spend a boat and I spend let me let me let me let me do that to get the coin let me go here spend a boot and pay two coins for a plane go up there I don't think that was the most optimized move I could have made but it's the move it's the move I went with Happy King's Day, Bloody Line. I don't know what it is, but I'm assuming it's a Dutch thing. Yeah, Mama needs an idol. Yeah, it's rough. This I, this board is so heavily explored. It's wild. This music's making me so sleepy. <laughs> you played Clank? Oh, I love Clank. Said the person that did most of the exploring with five guardians. Shh. Uh, no one needs to know. That's my secret. They're changing the Taurus laws in Arnak after our expedition. Yeah, we've just trampled over, trampled over all the, all the native foliage. <laughs> if it says cheese product, it's a fake cheese. That I think that's a valid distinction. That's fair. I don't know if my five guardians are enough to save me. We'll find out. Interesting point, mad scientist. I don't know. What kind of cheese is that classified under? Like, what type of cheese is a combination of other cheeses? I guess my my cheese knowledge is not up to snuff. This might be a weird choice, but I'm gonna draw a card. Come on! Ah! I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry real human tears. Oh my God, that was worthless. Get raked. Thanks, Aqua. Incredibly helpful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, I'll just move my book up there. I will uh, exile this stupid fear I got. Goodbye. I know it sounds like I'm trying to justify my cheese sins, but I really do wonder, like, legally, what constitutes cheese versus cheese product. Hot take, I hate cheese bloody line. Go back into lurk. Get out of here. Get out of here with that. All right, let's, let's, let's educate ourselves, chat. Cheese versus cheese product. <clears throat> the cheese product version, however, takes cheese that has already been made and mixes it with emulsifiers, preservatives, more salt and more fat to create something that is cheese-like. So it's, what, what? The difference between cheese and cheese products. Is it still cheese? Processed cheese is not totally real cheese. While it's made of cheese, around 50% of its compositions are non-cheese ingredients. When it's processed, the actual cheese has changed in flavor and texture, so it's not the same thing. 
You have a slice of American cheese out for weeks. It'll change color and curl, Ugh! but it's not going to mold because the dairy and bacteria in the cheese are kidding. The dairy and bacteria in cheese, wow, this article is riddled with typos, are canceled out by other ingredients that preserve processed cheese. Cheese spelled C-H-E-E-S. That's just the end. And give it a longer shelf life. Okay, I'm not reading that article anymore. I don't trust an article about cheese that misspells the word cheese. <laughs> so I'm gonna throw out all that information I just learned because I no longer believe it. <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. <laughs> Just... <laughs> Alright, let's go there and get my tablets. Alright. Game's coming to an end. Maybe that's the product they're trying to sell, Chiz TM. <laughs> Chiz is the bee's knees. <laughs> that would actually be, that'd make for really cute cheese product marketing. You call it cheese without the E, and you say it's the bee's knees. That's cute, I like that. They're talking about cheese too? Oh my god. <laughs> Tell Panda I say hi. What do you have against cheese, my guy? What's, what's wrong with it? Good plant-based cheese alternative slogan. It's like totally asleep. Oh my god, ow, pain. Pain. God, I would die if I was lactose intolerant. The only thing that saves me from my myriad of really annoying illness, like not illnesses, Jesus, uh, allergies, is that I can eat gluten and like dairy products. If that, if I couldn't have those two things, I don't know what else there would be for me to eat. I think I would die. Straight up. Because I'm allergic to a lot of things that make hitting my dietary needs very difficult. <laughs> Cheese is gross and I don't like it. You know what? Valid, bloody. I've been told all my life I have to eat cheese and now I'm traumatized. Oh no. Sorry to unpack that for you, bloody line. I'm so sorry. You're being a sort of mastodon about how cheese vegans are trying to cancel me. We accept everyone and all their food preferences here. <gasps> Yay! Thank you, Kit Kat. renny has got a lot of very valuable stuff. She's got three arrowheads and two gems. What's, what's going on? Mmm. I have to say I don't like cream cheese. And I think I've had it. So I don't think I, it, I dislike the product itself. I just don't like the term cream cheese. It like freaks me out. Like I've had cream cheese frosting before and that's fine. But I would never willingly put cream cheese in my bagel. It freaks me out. I think it just was just a bad name. Cream cheese. Yeah, I don't really like cheesecake either. Yeah. I'll eat cheesecake, but I won't go out of my way for cheesecake. It's a very cheese-based country. Well, that's why I was a little surprised when you said you didn't like it. But you're, you're, just, you're just breaking the mold. I'm allergic to milk, so my cheese addiction can be fun. Oh no, that's the worst when you're allergic to something but you still like it. That's the worst. Because for me, I've got allergies to a lot of things, most importantly like legumes and, and shellfish. 
But the good thing is I have no desire to eat those things. They, 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 the smell grosses me out. The concept of shellfish is weird to me. So it's like fine. I have a couple of allergies, like, um, not super serious one. Like I'm technically allergic to peas, which sucks because I love peas. They are delicious. But if I eat too many of them, uh, it's a bad time. <laughs> That's the worst. If you actively enjoy something, but you can't have it. I feel like for the most part with my really serious allergies, there's something evolutionarily that happened in my body of like, mm, this thing's going to make you feel bad. So you don't like it. Now I don't like it. Like I have no desire to eat peanut butter or anything. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I've always thought it was really gross, but I guess that's a chicken or an egg thing because I'm allergic to it. So <laughs> it makes me feel like crap when I eat it. So that probably influenced my, my thoughts a little bit. That would mean noof chattel? Is that what that word is, Kika? Other than cheese, what other foods can be polarizing? Ooh, interesting. Oh, that still sucks though, Kit Kat. Yeah. Ugh. Dude, that's actually the worst though. When you react to something silly sounding like a milkshake, it's so embarrassing. I had that happen one time. I had a cookie that had soy in it, which I'm very, very allergic to soy. And it's the worst because you're in the ER, right? You feel like crap. You've got IVs in, you've got your, your, your in anaphylaxis or something similar. It's a bad time. And every other medical person, every nurse, every doctor, everyone, when they come into the room, they go, they come, they come into the room. They're like, so what'd you eat? What happened? And I have to be like, I had a cookie. And I hate that. I would love to be able to say, I don't know, something more adult sounding. It's the worst to be an adult and be in the hospital because you ate something childish. It's the worst. It's, I know like they don't care. I know this is in my head. They, they don't care. They just want to know what I ate. But I hated that. I had that happen one time. And I swear to God, every five minutes I had to be like, and a chocolate chip cookie. <laughs> it just sounds so lame. It sucks. It sucks. I wish it would be like, I ate a scorpion or I don't know, something manly and like something, I ate something worthy of putting me in the ER. It's awful. Awful. I ate a froth IRA, Jesus. Um, dun, 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 dun. I don't think I can move my uh, magnifying glass anymore. Ooh, I think it might be, might be the end of the line for me soon. I could gamble on drawing another card. I think I have to still have some good cards in there, I think, right? I don't know, I don't know. I'm scared, I'm scared. Or I could just take the two tablets and move my book up one more. That's only one point though. That's only one point, that's not worth it. This is a bad final round. Yeesh, yeesh. Yeah, Rennie is killing the, absolutely killing the research track, uh, Soften. Yeah, like when I was small, I had a second degree, second degree freezer burn hand and in the hospital, they asked me what I was doing. And I said, I was going to school for 15 minutes. That's the worst. I, it, it sucks when you're in, when you're in the hospital for something mundane, it's the worst. It just gets, it's also like, if you have to say it once, fine, you get it over with. But it's the fact that like, especially if you're a low priority ER case, right? You know, you're not, you weren't shot or something you get a myriad of people coming through the room, right? Cause you get, you keep getting handed off to other people. You know, people come and they check on you for like a minute then they leave then they come back. What did you eat again? It's the fact that I had to say it like 20 times. And by the end I was, it was in tears. It was horrible. It was horrible. I think I eventually ended up saying I had some dessert. I think I ended up, <laughs> ended up speaking about it more vaguely cause I was so fed up with it.
Yeah, God, this is, I don't want to be the first one to pass, but I think I'm gonna have to be. God, I never made use of this boat. This was a weird, this was a very weird game for me. This is very weird. Ending with two fear is disgusting, but I think that's it. I think that's it, boys. We're done. That's the end of my Arnak game. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's going to be enough for me. I got punched by a guy who rubbed his knuckles in peanut butter oil. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. I remember a couple times I'd be like, read my chart. I don't have, I'm too socially anxious to like speak back to healthcare workers. I'm like, just please don't kill me. Please fix me. Just make a sign I ate a cookie. <laughs> yeah, that was the worst one. That was the worst one. I would never speak back to someone for helping me. I can't do it. I, I can't do it. Could, could not. If someone's, if someone's helping me, mm -mm. say, I mean, like it, it, it's similar to like, you know, wait staff or something. If someone is, is spending their time trying to make your day better, you can't, you can't. Well, I wouldn't be mean about it yet. Gym time for me. No worries, JD. Have a wonderful day. Thanks for hanging. Going to a hospital with a broken leg was more manly because I'd say I toss a 330 pound log across both my legs while I'm pushing it overhead in the gym. Is that true? <laughs> I mean, I guess at the end of the day, does it really matter how it happened? I mean, I guess in some cases, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Don't take medical advice from me. It's true. Wait, that's cool. I mean, I'm sorry you broke your leg, but you did it in a cool way. And see, now you have a cool story. That one time I ate a cookie and my tummy hurt is not a cool story. <laughs> yeah, that's true, Mella, that's true. Make a great children's book though, yeah. Time my tummy hurt. I had to go to the hospital. <laughs> God, I had an allergic reaction. I had an allergic reaction uh, to the dinner that we had before I went to see the D&D &D movie. <laughs> I don't think I told this on stream because I talked about the movie itself. I don't think I talked about my experience watching that movie. I had, sometimes my allergies pop up in such unexpected places. For the most part, I can anticipate, hey, this thing's gonna make me react. I should stay away from it. It has peanut butter in it. But the soy allergy is sneaky. Soy's in a lot of things, especially like a lot of things that have like need high preservatives. Um, and I got fries, which I've never reacted to in my life, but they were like garlic fries. It must've been the garlic oil or something. Must've just been from like a can or something that like had preservatives, had soy in it. That's the only thing I could think of that it would have been. But it was one of the worst allergic reactions I've had in a long time. I think the only other recent one that I've had was when I was at PAX U and I had an allergic reaction in Jamie's hotel room, <laughs> which was terrible. But I reacted to the fries and I, we, because we walked outside, like oftentimes cool air and stuff. If you've ever had like an allergic reaction, if it's not like you're dying, if it's in that kind of middle ground, Sometimes, you know, calming your mind, getting cool air can like keep it at bay, kind of. So we walked outside um, after dinner. I got lots of cool air. I was feeling fine and like not fine, but like I was, I was going to survive. I was, you know, on the fence about going home or not. And then I got outside, got some cool air. Everything was fine. And then I got into the, the theater and it's dark and it's hot. And again, if you, if you have a lot of allergies, you might be, you might have had a similar experience where it, in your environment can affect sort of how you react to something because like that heat and like the the closedness of it all the stale air of like my small town movie theater i started like breaking out in highs my eyes were like swelling i eventually just took benadryl which i should have taken earlier but benadryl makes me so sleepy it makes me so sleepy and i really wanted to see this movie and not fall asleep so i had been neglecting benadryl which was stupid don't do that but I was like, I can power through, it's fine. And I, five minutes into that movie, I was like, mm, I can't see the screen anymore. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's take some Benadryl. But luckily the movie was good enough and engaging enough that I didn't fall asleep despite having had two Benadryl, which normally would make me uh, pass out. 
the middle ground of dying. Yeah. I felt so bad. She just got there. We were all playing ready, set, bet. And she just goes, uh-oh, I'm feeling anaphylactic. I, that was terrible. I promise you, you did not feel worse than I did. I wanted to hang out with you so badly. I was so angry that of all the days of Pax U to have something like that happen, it had to be the one night I set aside to hang out with Jamie and her friends. It sucked so much. Oh my God. Two Benadryl ups as movie critic. Honestly, that is high praise. That the movie was good enough that it, it allowed me to push through the Benadryl sleepies. Oh, Razor, how are you still going? What are you doing? I looked over there last round and you had no resources. What kind of... Wow, you guys have played... See, you guys got good hands. Look at all these crazy cards these people are playing. Oh my god. No, I don't think this is my game. I don't think so. I think... I don't think it's me. What is, yeah, Sovereign Eraser's got, played three artifacts and three items just this round. Yeesh. Y'all are kicking my butts. My butts, my plural butts, yes. Ooh, I hope you have fun, Alkali. I'll love to know your your thoughts afterwards. Teehee, how dare you, Razor? How dare you teehee me? How dare? The deck building is my favorite part of this game. I only goofed up this round because I had a ton of card draw, but no cards to draw. Oh, that's the worst. That's the worst. When you waste the opportunity to card draw because you just haven't built up enough of your deck. Mm. Or because you burned through all your cards already. Yes, Razor is very, very good. You should all be scared. <laughs> Damn, and she's got two temple tiles. We're, we're, we're done. That's it. That's GG's. <laughs> I'm hoping that I at least secured second. I got 15 more points than everyone else when it comes to guardians, but I don't, I don't know that that'll be enough. I, I'm, I'm hoping for second. That's officially my personal goal. I don't know that we got that though. I only play card draw strategy. It works one out of five times. Yeah, no, I agree. The card, the card drawing deck building aspect is really fun. I just get very sucked into the exploring part. That's usually what I focus on. And then I'm like, oh yeah, I should, I should get cards. But I usually think about it too late to the point where I don't get the benefit from the cards um, as much as I would have if I got them earlier. But this game, this game I was so proud of myself. I've got so many cards and they're all stuck in this deck. I'm so angry. All right, it's down to Rennie and Razor. Plural butts, thank you, bloody. Ooh, good luck, Kit Kat. Godspeed. <laughs> Ooh, it's Rennie and Razor fighting it out at the top of this temple. Very impressive. What's your favorite leader? I, okay, all right, let me be honest. My favorite leader is the Falconer, because I, as you can see in this game, I'd like to go for an exploring um, guardian overcoming strategy. So I love the Falconer, it plays to that side of the gameplay really well, but I have a soft spot in my heart for the Baroness because I think she's unduly hated by many people. So I play the Baroness out of spite now because I love to beat people with the Baroness because for whatever reason, a lot of people think she's underpowered and I think they just don't know how to play her properly. So those are my, those are my answers. I, I think the Baroness is really fun and she gets, she, she doesn't get the love she deserves. All right, here we go. All right, I'm winning in the artifact category and I'm gonna win in guardians but I did not do well in the research track is it enough god everyone else had a lot of cards though I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know I don't know come on come oh it's so close Eesh. oh man GG's Rennie let's go Rennie pulls it out with the number one victory 
followed by Soft and Eraser, only five points behind, then me in third, and Jamie in fourth. Whew. GG's, everybody. Well done, Renny. Uh, if we've got a mod here to dole out points for anyone who voted for Renny, that'd be fantastic. All of you Renny believers, enjoy your newfound channel points. Aw, oh, Jamie, I'm so sorry. <laughs> good game, everybody, though. Really good game. That was fun. GG's, everybody. Thank you so much. Razor, Renny, Jamie, thank you for taking time out of your day to play with us. This is, this is not as fun when I have to play against randos. I much prefer playing against real people that I know from chat. So thank you for taking the time, taking the time to do that. I hope you had fun. Uh, if you're, if you're new around here, I tend to play something with chat. Um, not every Thursday, but like every other Thursday, I'm either playing like a galaxy trucker or lost Rings of Arnex, something where people can, can play with me. It's typically the day I reserve for a slightly heavier games. Friday is party games, typically, except for this Friday, which is painting hell. So once again, tomorrow I will be live starting at 11 a.m. Eastern, and I'll be going until I'm... OMG, <laughs> your captions were out of pocket. I'm so sorry. They're, they have a mind of their own today. Uh, tomorrow's stream will be me painting all of the Starship Captain's minis until they're all painted. We stop when the, when the task is done. I'm gonna be joined by Jamie Daggers, who's in chat. She is a professional mini painter. She has an amazing stream that she runs. Uh, please, please go follow her. She's gonna be streaming at the same time as me. We're gonna be in a little Discord call together. We're gonna be keeping each other accountable and company while we paint way too many minis. It's gonna be delirious and chatty. It's just gonna be a nice time. It's gonna be one of those streams that's just gonna be up kind of all day. So feel free to have it on in the background. Stop in and out as you're doing the rest of your day. I would greatly appreciate it. Having folks in chat is a great motivator for me to actually finish painting all these minis. No such thing as too many minis. Uh, disagree. <laughs> but thank you, Jamie, for agreeing to come on this journey with me. Don't listen to this anti-mini propaganda. I love you all very much. Thanks for hanging out with me this Thursday. I've missed you guys. I'm, again, I'm so sorry for having to miss the Tuesday stream, but it's good to be back. I'm gonna find a somebody to raid and I'm gonna go head on, head on out of here. Let's see, who who we got going on is, I was gonna raid Panda, but it doesn't look like she's still live. Wow, there's tons of people live today. That list is so long. Oh no, she is still live. Just kidding, she is still live. She got, she got buried uh, amongst other people. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's go raid Panda. Is she doing something with food? Is she sorting beans? Hold on, I'm watching an ad. So I'm looking at it really tiny. It looks like she's sorting beans. Is that what's happening? Is that, is that what's happening here? Oh my God, this is the longest Taco Bell ad in the world. Jesus, Twitch, we gotta chill with the really long ads. An ad is fine, but, oh, she's sorting like Legos? Oh, cute. All right, let's go hang out with Panda. She's the best. Let's do a little raid. Panda Angel. All right, go say hi to Panda. If you don't know who Panda is, you're about to find out. She's delightful. She's a really sweet content creator here. She does a lot of board game stuff and occasionally apparently some crafty stuff as well, maybe. Uh, and it looks like she's hanging out with Phantom Maple, who is a great friend of the channel. Joe is awesome. So yeah, we're gonna go see what she's up to today. Drop her raid. Uh, the raid message will be, uh, check out this raid. Feel free to add subscriber emotes to that message if you got them. I will see you all here bright and early tomorrow for a whole day of Ray plus Jamie chaos and mini painting disasters. I love you all very much. Have a lovely day. I'll see y'all later. Bye, everybody.